horror episode this week. This week's topic is going to be horror film remakes. Got a whole list of stuff to talk about, so we're going to go ahead and get into it. But before we do that, let me introduce myself. I'm Clive Craven of the Burial Grounds. Make sure to check me out on YouTube at uh, youtube.com backslash IQ the number one goon and let me pass it along to JP once again you can check me out on Twitter at Twitter double shot JP YouTube slash double shot J you can also find my stuff now some of my content on horrorbed.com and the devil's eyes.com good Steve what up, everybody? It's Steven Ferrandino once again from Shock Extreme Productions. Uh, make sure to follow me on my YouTube. That is Shock Extreme 1. You can also find me on Facebook at Steven Ferrandino or at Shock Extreme Productions. And a lot of people have been asking me as for that new social uh, network out there that's supposed to be a bird. I think JP uses it a lot. Uh, don't bother to find me on there because I have no idea what that is. All right, Moods, let's take it away. Yeah, what's up, everybody? Uh, Mood 616, you can find me on YouTube. At me six one six. That's my regular channel. You can also find me on the Fright Tube oh, on Sundays. One. I am the Sunday reviewer. JP is the Thursday reviewer. Clive is the Tuesday reviewer, and Steve is the Saturday. So this is basically Fright Tube after Wait, dark. Steve does reviews on the Fright Tube. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. You're very and funny. That's, and that's about it, yeah. folks. Uh, just check me out there. You can check me out on Facebook at Moods J Failer. Friend me, and yeah. Get it started. Okay, so obviously, guys, we all know what we're here for tonight. Horror film remakes. We've all done our homework this week and um, got a lot of movies to talk about. There's a lot of classics, a lot of great films to discuss. So let's kick it off with a uh, beloved franchise and a beloved film with a not-so-beloved remake. Let's start it off with A Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Does any first of all does anybody like a Nightmare on Elm Street the remake? It's, it's a lot hard. better than Friday the Thirteenth. I'll give you that. Actually, Whoa. I'll say I like I like the Friday the Thirteenth remake way more. But but Whoa. I didn't hate the Friday. I mean, I didn't hate the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. What I did hate about it was puppeteer spaced out fucking Freddy. I did yeah, not they, like they, the look of the face. I didn't. I thought it was too clean, too smooth. The voice was fine. The acting was fine. The kills were cool. Um, I just didn't like the look of Freddy. That's that's the only thing that really killed that movie for me, honestly, is the look of Freddy. Didn't somebody on here say that he looked like some Muppet? I think it was Clive that said that. <laughs> yeah, he looks like a fucking Muppet. It's seriously, I'm waiting. Yeah, he for looked really like, shitty, man. He puppeteer hands looked... pop up. It's ridiculous. Okay, yeah. well, no. Moods, go ahead and, and give us your opinions on the Nightmare on Elm Street remake, because I know you have some... Some um, opinions. <laughs> you know, it, it's pretty much the only movie that I really wanted to leave. I was watching the theater, and I was like, I can't even... I punched myself in the face four times after for sticking out the 90 minutes. <laughs> that movie was horrible. Like, first off, I hated the fact that they changed, you know, the storyline that's kind of, you know, it's not so much said in the original series. I think eventually it does come out that he may have been a child molester slash killer. You know, in the original Nightmare on Elm Street film, he was a child killer, and that's what it was. He was a child killer. So they changed it in the storyline, made him a child molester, which I find is just so absurd to do. I think that's ridiculous. Like, it's just, you know, I, I, I just, there's no need for that. Just keep him a child killer. I thought that was a big, big problem with the film. Um, I, again, we addressed, you know, the look of Freddy. I thought he was horrible. I thought the effects were really shitty. You know, the, the scene where the face comes out of the wall. You know, that they did that really good in 1984. That is so bad. How did they make it look so damn good and fresh in 1984? And this is 20 fucking years. It's a fucking piece later. of latex with a hole cut in a wall. That's so all you got to do. Yeah, with things. careful lighting. These are the little things yeah, I did not like. Exactly. And honestly, I didn't even like... I didn't like the main um, girl in the film. Oh, I, I fucking hate her. Yeah, and that was another thing. I didn't like the cast. I really do. Oh. I don't oh. care what dragon tattoo awesomeness she's been up to, dude. She was bland as hell in A Nightmare on Elm Street. So and then she goes dude. on to say how much she almost quit acting after doing that film. It was the worst mistake ever. And then uh, <laughs> just when you compare her to Heather Langenkamp, she, she is oh. just garbage. Is this who I think it is? Yeah. I got to say, got him? I totally agree, man. She was bland, boring. And, you know, her lead mixed in with all those other little, you know, things about the film. 
It's a t- it's a terrible movie. Dude, and I like the guy who her love interest was way more than I liked her. Mm. I gotta be honest, Freddie did piss me off a lot in this movie. I mean, I love the actor that played him, but the makeup was awful. You know, they went too OD with the burns. The voice sounded something like a lead singer in a death metal band to me. It was just like so unneeded. Robert England from the original had, you know, a good voice, not too over the top, but I think Jackie Earl Haley went too overboard with the voice on this one. Yeah, and back to the stupid fucking wall thing, because that really pisses me off, dude. <laughs> How do you make that wall look so bad? It's it's so bad. How yeah. is a movie that was made so so many years before it? And like on a, and a such a minuscule budget too. Yeah. You know, they went for Friday the Thirteenth. Wes Craven didn't have a lot of money. This movie was actually relatively a decent sized budget. That's even that makes it even worse. How can you film that and then you know add the CGI in and actually not be embarrassed when you look at that? Like, yeah. how can you not be embarrassed? Yeah. And but you know, there's a bunch of stuff I don't like about the film, but there is a few things I do like about it. I like the fact that we at one point in time we're unsure if he did it or not. I'm glad that he did do it, but I thought the angle of not knowing if he really did it was kind of interesting. Another thing that I did like was the micro-naps. The micro-naps were a really cool idea because they actually exist. When your body's awake so long, you get, like, brief seconds of sleep. Your body just sh- shuts down for a few seconds, and uh, I-, I love that idea. Yeah, I agree. That is actually a pretty decent angle. So Yeah, and the some of pause. the dream sequences oh, looked pretty cool when, like, in the classroom when everything turns to ash. That looked pretty cool, but... Besides that, yeah, I mean, as a whole, the film is a total flop. It's a, it's a it's a bad remake, and it's, it's a shame, you know. It's it's too bad. I'm never in all three. <laughs> Tell the story when you walked out of the theater. <laughs> when I walked out, which one? <laughs> when people were talking about your tattoo. <laughs> oh fuck, man! So this is getting course, mad. The thing that I you know I talked about earlier about how they changed the story. Or just put it right, right out there for you know. Freddie was a child molester. Well, I'm wearing a sleeveless shirt, and my tattoos are hanging out, and some dude is like, "Fucking, he's got a child molester tattooed on his arm." I was like, "Oh, for fuck's sakes!" I'm like, this, and now I just, I almost exploded. I was so embarrassed. I was like, "This is fucking ridiculous. This can't be happening. This is horrible." Dude, no I would have, I would have been like, "Are you fucking serious?" Yeah. Really? I was like, oh, I, I said to my buddy, I was like, let's get out of here, man. <laughs> Fucking horrible. I would, I would just like, wow, wow. Yeah. I didn't even know what to say. I couldn't. I was like, oh fuck. I just, I had to leave, man. <laughs> That's, so, That's fucking crazy. Yeah. So does anybody have anything they like, like about it though? Besides the, the few things I mentioned. I'll be honest, man. I like the fact that you do get backstory, and I like the fact that they do give more info than they really ever have in any other previous ones. And I know that they 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 want certain ways that they may have not gone in the past, and you know maybe things weren't exact. But I don't know. I actually really did like the remake. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't I didn't think it was amazing, and I do think that you know, like I said, Friday the Thirteenth remake was better in my opinion, and probably even the Texas Chainsaw well definitely the Texas Chainsaw remake. Um. You know, the only one that I don't like more is probably the Halloween remake. You know, yeah. but we'll talk about that later. But um, I'm just, I don't know. I didn't think it was as bad as, as you guys are making it out to be. I mean, um, you know, you I know, the, like killer, really I know the killer is not having Robert England. I know that's the fucking killer. Because I guarantee you, if Robert England was in there with the same other characters and the same plot and everything, a lot less people would have hated the film. I think a lot of people probably. threw it under the bus. Mainly because of not having Robert England. I don't think they gave it a chance because, let's face it, a lot of the sequels of A Nightmare on Elm Street aren't exactly really well done films. So it blows my mind when people are like, well, it's not so well done. It's like, did you see, like, any of the fucking Nightmare on Elm Streets from, like, four to fucking eight? Like, you know what I mean? Just, I don't know. My opinion, the only, I mean, the only uh, sequel that I really dislike in the franchise is Freddy's Dead. I just find it so ridiculous. Yeah, we already know. Yeah, it's basically a satire of itself. You know, it's like Freddy sitting with his feet up playing Nintendo, and it's it's ridiculous. I mean, and the fucked up thing about that movie is that it does have a decent premise to the film, and they totally fucked that up. They fucked up a really good idea 
and just made it into a comedy, and it's 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 a shame. But otherwise, you know, all the other sequels I find are actually decent, you know, enough. I mean, I have my my problems with part two, um, but off. you know, overall, the franchise is pretty decent. I mean, I think Wes Craven did a great job with New Nightmare. He kind of saved it after fucking Freddy's Dead's complete bomb, you yeah. know. So yeah. But does yeah. anybody actually think that the girl, the Rooney Mara chick, actually played a good Nancy? That no. that makes that is probably no. the thing that makes me the most mad in the whole series. She's so boring. She was so boring, and I I said that too when I watched this. Like she was horrible as a. I mean, you know, I don't want to sit there and go, you know, and try and compare her to her. But you know, as an actress, you still got to have some flavor in the film. You can't always compare yeah. everybody in a remake to the original people because they're not going to be the same. So you take it for what it is, you know. And she was she was bland. She was boring. You know, I tried to accept it, and I, it just didn't work for me, so. How did you guys feel about, like, the stuff that Freddie would say, like, with the dog, like, I'm just petting him? Like, did you did any Unneeded. of that come off, like, cool to you? No. Unneeded. No, it came off like he was, he was trying too hard, and that was See, another thing. There was a feud that I did, like, like, when the dude's dead, and he's like, we still have, like, six minutes to play or something, because the brain lives on for, like, five minutes or ten, ten minutes or whatever the hell it was. I kind of like that. It was creepy. Mm -hmm. it was... I think he was trying a little too hard to be Robert England. Yeah. yeah. I completely agree with that, actually. So, But, you know, Clive, you did address the fact that if, you know, if this movie did have Robert England, it was the same remake, and Freddy was Robert England, I, <laughs> I think it still would have been not that great of a film because, I mean, the lead actress, like I said, it just takes you out of it. She was horrible. But, I mean, as long as they didn't have the makeup artist from Freddy's Dead doing his makeup, <laughs> <laughs> it's makeup in Freddy's Dead's horrible. Let me, let me bring this up real quick. If they Say if they didn't get the original Nancy to play Nancy in the remake, who do you think would have played a good Nancy in this film from, like, today's That's actresses? That's a good question. Yeah, that is a good question because Nancy's such a she's she's the perfect you know girl next door you know yeah um, you know you don't want to have that you know like a Jessica Biel I think would be too much I mean maybe it worked for the Chainsaw remake but just to have her in the lead is I don't know I don't think that would work I don't know it's a good question who would you yeah. cast I don't know that that's why I asked you guys it is a tough question actually because you I mean. You want to find someone that's... Really you know who you get? I know who you get, okay? You get somebody who is unknown. Oh, for sure. That for fits, sure. That fits the character. Yeah. That's I mean, because that's the one reason why these movies earn, like, these big dollars is because they cast some girl or some guy from a well-known TV show, movie, or that's, like, a well-known musician to cast it. That's the main reason they get these, these amount of money. Yeah, that was like, you know, in the late... And, and hold up, I have another question about this fucking movie. <laughs> How the hell do they have a secret room in the preschool that, they, that the police wouldn't have found? Like, get out of here. Dude, I question the same thing. That's so dumb. It is. It it's really sense. dumb. It, it is literally, that's what it is. You know, they just didn't know about this room. I'm like, what the... F like... I mean, come on, man. Police aren't that fucking Like, stupid. you have a bunch of the kids saying he took us to a cave, and you're, you're not going to check around to see if there's, like, some hidden room? Yeah, that's a good point you bring up, man. That's a really good point. See, here's, yeah. here's my thing with that, and I, I bring this up all the time. You have to suspend belief when you watch yeah, a movie. I, I totally agree. Really but do. because I, mean, I hate this film, I'm going to pick it to death. if you that. suspend belief... And, you, you, I mean, that's a hard one to get past, though. Come on, it's such a simple premise. Like, the kids are saying that they were going somewhere. How like, do they why didn't they the took him to, the boil, to his right boiler room there. or something, somewhere else? I mean, you, you can really nitpick at any franchise with this. I mean, perfect example. How the fuck does the family in Texas Chainsaw Massacre not get caught after, like, fucking 10,000 killings? Like, they just live in this house and no one's ever came back there and no cops have ever called them? Like... You know what I mean? Like it just. Oh, we'll get into that. Trust you know, me. you you, you got to really suspend the belief. Like, it, it it's for every franchise, really, for I every think, film. You know. I think that is a good example because. Yeah, but see, that's in the seventies, and but this but new shit is in like two thousand thirteen. How do you get past that? Like, that's just so ridiculous. It's right there. Yeah. You know, I just I can't get past that. Like, it's hard. But I don't know. 
All no, right, I, so I, I get what you're saying though, Clyde, because I am nitpicking. I you you are supposed to spend <laughs> suspend your disbelief with a lot of things, but <clears throat> the fact is, I don't like this film a whole lot, and it's what's funny <laughs> is I used to like it, so I'm gonna take every opportunity I can to tear it down. <laughs> All right, let let's keep it moving. Um, the next one we have on the list is drum roll the Amityville Horror. But before we get into this. Before we get into the Amityville Horror, I do want to give a shout out to uh, the people that are watching. Ryan Dog, uh, my homie Ryan McFerrin, and Dave K, Dave Koenig from YouTube. Shout outs to you guys. I see that you're tuned yeah, in. Yeah, Dave K, you're awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So, Dave K, he Dave, is dope, man. Dave Koenig's an awesome guy. Yeah, I wanted really to throw that shout out there for them. The um, but yeah, let's get into the next one. We have Amityville Horror. So yeah, the Amityville Horror remake. Well, I know Moods just watched it, so why don't you kick it off? Fuck, man. Okay, the movie itself is not a horrible movie. But the biggest issue I have with the movie is the casting. Ryan Reynolds <laughs> is so bad in the movie that it, it just takes me out of it. Every scene that is trying to be serious and he's like trying to act scared or whatever, he's not pulling it off. It's, it's just a really poor performance. And you know, with that said, like I said, the movie's not horrible. I think actually the little girl that's in it, she's the girl from uh, Kick-Ass. She's very young in the film. Really? I didn't know that. I think she's yeah, actually yeah. the girl that just got cast in the Carrie remake. But she's actually pretty good. Like, she's young in this movie, man. Probably like eight or something. Like, she's young. And she's the best. I think that was the same as Little Miss Sunshine, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like, she's pretty good. But, you know, I think with a better lead, someone rather than Ryan Reynolds, that movie could have been pretty good, but... You know, the movie's fresh in my mind, and it doesn't do anything for me. I, it makes me want to watch the original. I'm not even the hugest fan of the original film. I like it. I don't dislike it at all. It's not my favorite movie. But the remake, bad casting, man. Really bad. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. No. I 100% agree with the Ryan Reynolds comment. Um, I, I agree. The film's not done bad at all. The effects are pretty good, and uh, the rest of the casting, the acting seemed pretty you know, decent. Yeah. Uh, nothing amazing, but it wasn't bad. But yeah, with Ryan Reynolds, I just keep seeing the fucking guy and waiting. You know what I mean? It's like you're not you're not the fucking you know you know you're not the fucking father of the family. You're the fucking you know, guy been waiting, bro. He's like, Dan that's, that's all I see. He's yeah, Van he's Wilder in every like, single movie, and that's like, all I see in that is Van Wilder. I'm like, fuck, where's Taj? Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, there were some. It's even bizarre when you see somebody like um. Like fucking Robin Williams in One Hour Photo, like mm. it's so off kilter because like you don't see those type of actors usually uh, appear in a horror film. So when you do see that, it's very, very, very strange. It is. Um, yeah. I think. I think. Um, you know, One Hour Photo. His performance in that film, Robin Williams' performance, is pretty good though. He's actually plays a pretty good bad guy. Like he's a. But the thing about Robin Williams, he's a better actor than Ryan Reynolds. He's more versatile. Oh yeah. Ryan Wait, Reynolds is not. He's a, he's decent in comedies and stuff. I'll give him that, but that's where he should stay. You know, trying to pull off a real serious horror movie like the Amityville Horror film is a is a serious horror film. You know, yeah. it's not like he's playing in fucking Scary Movie Six. <laughs> <laughs> I got to. They should though. cast him if they make another Scary Movie. They should cast him for that because he's perfect. <laughs> there were some parts in the Amityville Horror remake that were pretty. Pretty good and also pretty scary. The one scene where he's in the basement and he sees everything with the Indians, that was pretty good and kind of was gross. The other scene that was kind of disturbing at some points was when the priest was in the room, the door slams, and you see the knob turn with the cross and it turns upside down. Yeah. I thought that was really creative. Yeah. But yeah. the sad thing I have to say about this, there's one sad thing. I was over at my friend's house with a bunch of over other people watching this, and they're like, let's watch a scary movie tonight. I'm flipping through. I'm like, oh, is Human Centipede? Yeah, definitely. That's scary as hell. Oh, no, we're going to get scared to hell by this. Oh, Amityville Horror. I'm like, that's the remake. Eh, it's still a scary movie. My friends were shitting their pants over this remake. They thought it was the scariest thing. I get picked up. I'm like, all right, guys, I got to go. They're watching inside. I see them through the window. I bang on the window like crazy. They all jump. <laughs> so it's really sad to see how people got actually like scared over this remake. Yeah, yeah. see, the Amityville Horror, man, I, I did watch about half of it before this episode, and I honestly don't hate it. I, I think it's I, – I do agree. After Mood said that, I, I do agree that Ryan Reynolds was probably totally the wrong person to cast. Um, but – 
I, I maybe it helps that I'm not familiar with the guy. Like I, I don't even know where he's from really, but um, just some of the way his like facial expressions are and some stuff just doesn't seem to fit. Um, but the, one scene that I actually really liked is the scene where he's chopping wood with his uh, stepson. He's making him hold good. his hands there. I'm like, oh shit, that's fucked up, man. That was yeah. that was that was suspenseful. That part was suspenseful. Yeah. The thing that makes me appreciate the Amityville horror a lot more is the fact that I actually live like 45 minutes away from dude, the house. Dude, how fucking cool so is that? After house? hearing the story, I love the look of that house, <laughs> dude. That house is so cool. I used to pass it all the time. I used to pass it all the time going to Pee Wee football games. But the one thing that that's what really made me kind of like the besides the remake, all the rest of the movies more, but for Ryan Reynolds really didn't disappoint me that much. I thought the parts with him and his son, I thought those were really good, like JP said when he's chopping wood. Yeah. I thought the ending, you know, it was a little over the top, but it was also really good. But I thought the son did a very good job in this movie. Whoever played the son did. Uh, to be honest, I actually little... like the movie. I, I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, neither do I. No, I'm, but I'm not whoever played this song was great. You know, I actually like it, it's it's decent for what it is. It's just Ryan Reynolds' performance takes me out of it so much, though. I just it, it, it like you said though, you do make a good point. If you're not too familiar with his past work, you know, it's not that it's not a big issue for you. But I've known Ryan Reynolds for like ever, you know. And uh, well, I mean, you've had comedians act in horror movies before. You've had uh, what's his. Leslie Nielsen and Creepshow, obviously. So it's not that uncommon to have a big known comedian act like yeah. once in a while in a horror movie. And some, some of them, them do a good job. job. Yeah. Leslie Nielsen good. in um, Creepshow, he did phenomenal. I thought he was actually kind of scary. Um, Jim Carrey in the number 23. I didn't like that. <laughs> I, I didn't care for that. I like this story. But I was saying that movie wasn't that bad, actually. Surprisingly. I don't yeah, think I was expecting crap, but Jim Carrey now he's gone into a different direction where he's doing a lot more. It's almost like Will Smith in both. They're doing a lot more serious movies than opposed to like Jim Carrey being like me, myself, and Irene, and Will Smith being you know the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Now they're doing all these serious movies, so it's kind of weird seeing that. Yeah. All right, let's keep it moving, guys. We got a lot more to go through, and we burned almost a half hour on two. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. That We're was definitely going to have 25 minutes on two. Part two. Part so. two. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, okay, so moving on. The next one we have here is April Fool's Day, which I have not seen. I've only seen it. I've not seen it either. I can't speak on the remake. I have it. I haven't seen it either. Uh, I've seen the movie once when it came out, and it was, it was devastating. It was okay, bad. I guess we could just move cool. along then. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, the next one I have seen, it is one of my favorite originals. The original film is definitely one of my favorites, and I didn't mind this remake. Um, didn't think it was amazing, but I didn't mind it, and that is Black Christmas. It's been so long since I've seen Black Christmas since it came out. I remember just similar to what Steve said about hanging out with a bunch of his friends, and uh, they were all really into it, and I remember just being like, eh, I'm not sure if I like it too much, so I, I don't know if I like it. It's been a while. The first time I watched that movie, I hated it, man. I thought it was pure garbage. I mean, the original Bob Clark film is amazing. This one, it took a little different approach to it. Um, I thought, I thought the ending was kind of, you know, whatever. But I don't know. It grew on me. I've watched it a couple times since it first came out, and I actually don't mind it anymore. Well, the original, the thing about the original is they tried to go for the su suspense in which you never see the killer. In this one, I think they tried to go for more of the gross-out factor in which, you know, he would bake the cookies out of people and then eventually I, I eat them. I like that scene. I, <laughs> yeah, it was creative, but I think they That's were going the for a I more remember. different approach. Yeah, I, rem I remember the mom being a total ass to the kid. That's also mm -hmm. one thing I remember. I thought that was pretty good, but you never hear about that in the original. So, it's kind. I like that in the fact that it's different. You know, it's not exactly going part by. You know, they're trying to do a little something new, and that's the one thing I really appreciate and like out of the remakes. I remember like the third act being kind of ridiculous. I just can't remember what was going on. Yeah, it, it's... I don't remember a lot about that movie. It's been a while. 
I, don't yeah, know, I actually like Bill Goldberg. It is what it is, really. Like I said, I, I don't think it's amazing by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I, like like Mood said, I didn't mind it at all. Um, I, I think it was another one of those remakes that a lot of people just kind of hated on because I think as soon as you say to somebody a film's being remade, no matter how good it really ends up being, they're going to want to <laughs> go into it fucking hating it. A yeah. real horror yeah. fan is going to want to go in fucking hating it. I don't give a shit how good it is. And even if they actually like it, even if they really, really fucking like it, they're still going to be a little harsh on coming off to admitting that they really like the film. Like, you know, it, 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 like Mood said, it does kind of have to grow on you. You know, Certain films actually have to kind of grow on you for you to really appreciate and like one them. Thing, one thing I do like about yeah. the movie, though, is the, the female characters that are in that film. Man, that's one hot cast of uh, chicks, man. Mm-hmm. It's almost a shame when they get fucking slaughtered. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, damn. <laughs> I just want to pick it up and give it another shot. But I gotta admit it though. The re- the original was phenomenal. It and is. it was pretty it like was. daring for the time. Like you would you really wouldn't see a movie like curse as much as that one did, besides maybe the Exorcist. Mm. Alright, so the next one we have here, before I get into it, um check in the comment board. Uh shout out to Adam. Uh, Adam likes metal. He's out there watching. He's a and, cool cat, man. I like that kid. He's dope. And, uh, Raider, I hate that kid. No, Raider Nation. Kidding. I don't know him. I don't know him. <laughs> Raider Nation Cali. Shout outs for calling us douchebags. Appreciate it. Serious? I actually like that dude. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, he's like, you're cool, but who are the other douches? That's great. Rock on, brother. <laughs> but yeah, uh, shout outs to them. Uh, moving on to the next one. We have the Blob Remake. Wait a minute, who's this guy liking and who is he hating? Yeah, does he like he, me? He likes JP, I think, but he said JT. He's like, JT is cool. <laughs> Who are the other douches, though? And then he's like, JP, what up? I don't know. All right, well, shout out to Nation Cali. Hey, man, that's brutal. That's not nice. That's cool. That's <laughs> no, that's pretty cool. I, I agree. Oh, Half of these dudes them. are douchebags. Uh, <laughs> Half? All of us. No. All right, um, we got Simon Cowell back in here. Simon I said the Blob, the Blob remake. It's one of the best remakes of all time. It's awesome. I love it. Anybody else? The Blob. Hey, remake. I actually really enjoy the Blob Kevin remake Dillon's myself. Hair. It's amazing. His hair is awesome. <laughs> Dude, the, the effects um, in that movie are just so awesome. It's so uh, cool to watch. Just looking so at it, you just want to look at it. You know what I mean? Just look at it. Can do. Just look at it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah everything about no, that movie is awesome, man. It's <laughs> definitely, good. it's definitely a good yeah. flick, though, man. I I watched it the first time, um, probably seven eight months ago, and it's funny because I picked it up at a pawn shop years ago, and I never watched it. Um, it was one of the movies I just archived and, and never got around to checking out. And I was kind of expecting like cheese. I was like, oh, this is a yeah, fucking eighties blob remake. I was like, this is gonna be fucking bad. It's gonna be like some. 80 sci-fi channel shit, and surprisingly, fucking surprisingly, it was actually really enjoyable. The effects were really cool. The kills were awesome. I thought the kills were great. Yeah. Um, and the blob itself looked good. I just thought it was you know, honestly a really, really well done remake overall. It's actually my favorite remake of all time. I love that movie. Really? Yep. It's my number That's one. A, honestly, it's a, in my top three favorite, and I've actually seen the original blob, so... Yeah, the I, other I ones in my favorite series. It's so different. I've never seen. It's different, but um, yeah, it's a good one, man. Just good all around. I love, the, I yeah. love the fucking the one guy who has that chick on the the makeup point or whatever, and he's got that fucking like awesome bar in his trunk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that shit is so I dope. I always wanted something like that for a car. I thought that was I'm like, like a this cool dude. This dude go. got like so much swag right now. Like fucking ice cubes and stuff. He's like pulling ice cubes out. I'm like, that's gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> I heard this from one yeah. other guy that uh, talked about the remake. He said that the original was something that you know represented the 50s at being you know cheesy, but this movie really represented the 80s, especially mm-hmm. with the effects. Yeah, that's one thing I appreciate with this. If you want a, a if you want an example of like good classic effects, you check out the Blob. Definitely. Yeah. The if blob it was I, made, if it was made any bit later, there's no doubt it would have been CG. Dude, you remember? Speaking of remakes, do you remember when Rob Zombie wanted to remake the Blob? Did he yeah, really? That was, that was in talks forever. I don't know what ever happened to that. Well, he he po- he asked everybody, all of his fans, like what they wanted to see next. And you know the blob, 
a new Halloween, something mm -hmm. else, or something original. And they obviously picked something original. That's why Lords of Salem was made. The blob, if Rob Zombie would have made it, it definitely would have been some devil or some sort. Dude, Dude that would definitely fucking definitely white trash that. blob town. That would be fucking crazy. <laughs> it would be somewhere down south, <laughs> and um, all these rednecks would be going crazy over this blob. It would be blob. the blob in a trailer park. Awesome. Yeah, or, or in a strip club. You could be either of <laughs> those two. Club, yeah. All right, we're going to go ahead and roll into the next one. Um, this is actually a request. Uh, we already had these films on the list, but we're going to get into the, this next three. Um, and Wait. this is basically a request from the chat board. So, uh, nice, getting the chat involved. I like it. Yeah, let's get yeah. into uh, Dawn of the Dead, a fucking phenomenal remake, Zack Snyder film. One of my favorites, absolutely amazing. Love the intro to it. Um, yeah, I just, th that, that first opening sequence with the attack and her getting in the car and driving through the city and the accident and just like the far out view, the Johnny Cash music, like it just, I love the Johnny off. Cash it intro gets off the fucking, yeah. the movie gets off. Like it's good. It's really fucking good. It, it, it exactly what it wanted to achieve. It did. Um, when I seen it. It was one of them ones that I was kind of because you know I love that series. I love all the Romero films. I'm a huge Romero fan. Um, so I was like, man, I don't know about this, you know. And I knew Romero really, really wasn't behind the helm. I was like, man, I don't know about this. But I gotta say, I was highly, highly impressed with it. I thought it was a really well done remake. You know, the only thing I me, really didn't. Oh my god. Good. Good. Oh, uh, the one thing I really didn't like about this, and I think it kind of started it off. Was running zombies that I didn't really like. I I'm wish they would have kept running it. zombies. Those zombies weren't even just running zombies; they were like sprinting fucking zombies. Like yeah, they were like yeah. marathon runners. Yeah, dude, dude those guys were hundred yard dash motherfuckers. Like it was quick <laughs> shit, man. Like, yeah, just, yeah. You know that Asian guy with the fucking one arm zombie is running towards the uh, I think it's the truck where the trucks park in the buildings. Mm -hmm. That part's great. Like they, dude, that dude is ripping, He's fucking tearing it up, man. I want to know one thing. You see the one part where they're all in, where they get the new people from the truck, and there's that big fat woman laying down, yeah. and she eventually turns into a zombie. What I want to know is if they sped her, if they, in the editing, like, made her go faster, or if she actually ran that fast. <laughs> because I, I can't imagine a woman at that, like, size running, like, a 50-yard oh, dash. No. But... <laughs> The, the thing the thing with me I used to love this film and now every time I watch it I find out thing I find more things that I don't like about it and one of them is being there's there's a point in the film where they want to leave the mall and I'm like why it's before like shit happens and they have to leave but I, I just don't see the point of wanting to leave the mall before they have to in the original film they were pushed out of the mall and you know I just don't see I just don't get it like why leave the mall um, I think the only guy that really wanted to leave the mall was um, Bing Rame's character because he said he was going to go see his brother somewhere. I yeah, think that I was think really the only see, guy. Like, they was like already like planning to leave it though, weren't they? Like building a fucking bus or something, or did that happen? I can't. Because really that's remember. where they heard about um, Stevens' um, boat that they could take him to an island somewhere. That's where they got the idea because they knew they weren't going to be safe in the mall any further. The only thing that I didn't like about the movie, really, uh, my only quarrel with it was the zombie baby. That I, like, I like. love that. Why not the zombie baby? That's, that's I was why it's never been done. It's, it was but it's never been done. There's a reason it's original. never been done because it came off like I don't know. It just it, I don't know, man. It just didn't. It didn't do it for me. It just came I like the zombie baby. Cheesy. I thought that was interesting. I tell you, I know, honestly, to me, that's the only flaw in the movie. That's like the worst part of the movie to me. Is I that tell you two things I love about this movie. The one part that I thought was probably the funniest is when uh, CJ, the security guard, was confronting um, the one guy. He's like, oh, you're so smart. What the fuck do you do for a living? Uh, I sell televisions at Best Buy. That was one part I found hysterical. <laughs> the other thing I really liked about this one was the fact that they got Ken Fury to do a small part in this movie as the news reporter. Saying, you yeah, know, the yeah traditional... I like all that stuff. Saying the you know the classic quote nice from touch. the original when there's no more room in hell the dead will walk the earth. Yeah, yeah. I uh, thought that thing, was great. The thing that I didn't like also, well, I like the movie first of all. I'm just kind of you know doing pros and cons right now. Um, in the original film, and this is completely comparing it to the original, 
it seemed like I identified with the characters way, way, way more than I did in this one. And it almost seemed like there were too many damn characters in this one. And you didn't have that, like, um, character development that, that makes great zombie films great. The greatest zombie films have, like, good characters. Yeah, they probably could have done without, you know, the whole security guard angle and stuff, too. I mean, if they didn't have that in there, it takes out some of the characters. I don't know. I mean, is it really necessary? But, you know, overall, I'm, I, I'm a really big fan of this movie. Uh, as most people do know, Dawn of the Dead is my favorite film of all time, so of course I was a really? little on edge. Uh, yeah, Dawn of the Dead is my favorite horror film. <laughs> so I was a little on edge about this. when I remember when it got announced in a remake, and I was like, for fuck's sakes, really? Like, Dawn of the Dead? And to my surprise, you know, I just went into it with an open mind and really enjoyed it. And i got to say, I... I you know, getting back to what Clive said about the beginning of the film, the opening scene and the music and just how you see everything exploding and just the carnage of it and shit, just the way they, you know, Zack Snyder did that really got me yeah, into that, it. Yeah, that was so awesome. That I would really say the was intro to that cool. movie was By the fucking credits, man, I was like, this is, this is cool, man. Like, they're actually really well done. And, uh, Another part in the film I really do enjoy is the uh, when they're picking off the celebrity. Yes, that is the that best. That is funny. Oh, Ryan, awesome. Burt Reynolds, Rosie O'Donnell, Jay Leno. I thought that it's was just, hilarious. It's a nice touch because it's not over the top goofiness. It's just fun. It was just fun, and I think it was really well done. So even the original had its bit of you know comedic effects when they're shoving the pies in the faces and all yeah, that. Yeah, that's the only thing I fucking hate about those. Even some of the music in the original um, had a comedic tone to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially once they turned everything on the, in the mall for the first time. That first bit of music was a little bit comedical. It sounded like a cartoon almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely agree. Um, okay, let's keep it moving, guys. Uh, the next one we have here is Day of the Dead. Are you skip Night of Living Dead? Oh, we're gonna get to Night of Living Dead. That one. You guys next. can talk about it. I haven't seen it. I've seen the Day of the Dead remake. Unfortunately. Speaking of, really quick, the people behind the Texas Chainsaw 3D remake are remaking Day of the Dead, just to let you guys know. So John Lucen. Oh, another yeah. turd. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Day of the Dead remake for me uh, was a it's huge... It's not really movie. a remake, though. It's, it's, a, it's a name-only remake from what yeah, I Yeah, it, exactly. it definitely is. But, I mean, when you compare it, like, if you try to even compare it to the original, like... To me, the original Day of the Dead is the best out of the original franchise. Uh, Day, Dawn, and Night. For me, that's my favorite by far. Um, yeah. But it sucks because it made me have that much more high expectations for it. I was like, you know, I really want this to be something special, but I have a feeling it's not going to live up to it. And sure enough, it didn't. I, I'm pretty sure that's the one with fucking Nick Cannon, right? Nick mm -hmm. Cannon was Nick in Cannon it. Nick Cannon and Ben <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I How seen, does Nick Cannon Let me, let me just that? say this. When I seen <laughs> Nick Cannon was in the fucking movie, I, I, I really was thinking, like, nah, this isn't the, nah, it can't be a fucking remake. I was like, it has to be some other movie just using that title. But it was supposed to be, like, a loosely based remake of the fucking film. And um, they, they kept the military element there. You know what I mean? Like, because the original obviously takes place in the military bunker. The remake kind of takes partial place in, like, military buildings and shit like that. and has some military in it, but Isn't it's Ving much Rames different. That? Yeah, Ving yeah, Rhames. Ving Rhames, Nick Cannon, and, I mean, I don't know. It was, it it was fucking horrible. I mean, let's, let's not lie. Let's not beat around the bush. That. It was fucking horrible. I, I heard... Was, I think Moods likes it. I actually don't, like, honestly... Um, <laughs> I just kind of, once again, took it for what it was worth, and I, you know, I'd already heard that it was basically a remake in name only, so I just, I went in going, okay, it's going to be completely different. So with that attitude, I just kind of took it for what it was. I didn't actually mind it with the fact that, you know, take Nick Cannon out of that, he was fucking terrible. But, you know, Steve Miner's a good director, and I, I think... Dude, I just, fucking Steve Miner directed that? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, and I just kind of, I just, I don't know, man, I didn't hate it for some fucking weird reason. Um... I don't know, man. I mean, it obviously was not a great, great film, but I don't know, man. I just went into it with a weird attitude, knowing that it wasn't going to be a full-fledged remake of, Dawn, or of Day of the Dead, so I guess... Are the zombies slow or fast? The zombies? They're, they they crawl on ceilings, I believe. Yeah, dude. The yeah. Zombies, they took a weird-ass angle with this They're one. all over the place. There yeah. was one word thing I heard. Eventually, along the lines, when they first released the trailer... 
I heard somewhere that it got such negative reviews reviews it was supposed to come to theaters but they pulled it because of all the negative reviews and then they just put it to a direct video release See, i'm not sure they, if that's true or not but that's what i've heard from some people what they need to do it. what they need to do and what i would love to see is we've had a good uh dawn of the dead remake we've had a good night of the living dead remake We've never had a good Day of the Dead remake. I would fucking love to see George Romero and maybe somebody else team up, redo it, and set it like in the exact same setting oh, and, yeah, and get characters that are very reminiscent of the original to try to redo it modernized if they're going to redo it at all. Because without those elements and without George and without um, John uh, Russo. a very I similar story and setting, I don't think it will be able to be done correctly. I just don't think it needs a remake like that because the original movie is perfect. You know, it's an amazing movie. It doesn't need to have a remake. And, I mean, of that actual... The thing is... I I don't know if it worked. The zombie genre is so simple to where you can make another movie that's kind of like it and it not be a remake. You know? Like, you could just call a movie something else and do a similar story as that. So, So it always seems pointless to remake films like Day of the Dead and Dawn of the Dead because a lot of zombie films are the same anyway. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, if they the ever wanted to water down right now, if they just... ever wanted to modernize a zombie film, I could see George Romero sort of teaming up with a director like Rob Zombie. That would really make it, you know, sort of modernized <laughs> and a little combo. more extreme. That would be pretty cool. I would, I would be surprised to see that. You know, but, but a combo that could definitely happen. you put both their visions into that. Yeah, that would be an interesting combination because, I mean, they they're both visionaries. Really, they got different angles on things that they do. So I don't know. Social okay, commentary film with lots of fucking work. Fucking news, um, that I just got from checking my uh, my inbox on Facebook. Apparently, YouTube is under maintenance right now, and nobody can even comment on the videos right now. I got like three oh, okay. people that inbox me uh, that are watching right now that that um, just aren't able to uh, to comment. Uh, Good time Zach is one of them who's in here with us, but apparently it won't let him comment or anything, or was in here with us. Um, he's watching, and uh, I was wondering why uh, Raider and, uh, Nation Laura. Kelly was the last one that commented. Uh, well, I believe is actually the newest member of the Fright Two, correct? Who, Madison? Yeah, but um, shout out to Madison. Well, my advice to all of those people is to watch it. Later then, if they can't watch it now, wait. They can watch it now, or they just can't comment. I think they can watch, but they can't comment. So I think they're still viewing, but not able to comment right now. Hold all your comments till the end. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, people, make sure you comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So yeah, let's if move on. Can. I guess we yes, we do read all our comments, even the even the love letters that Steve and JP get. <laughs> oh, those are the best. Yeah, ones. chill with that. Chill with that. <laughs> I oh, think, I kid! I, I think kid. Raider Nation. I think your friend JP Raider Nation <laughs> Cali. I don't think he likes me very much. I think you said. <laughs> I think what you meant to say is all the praise that I get and all the love letters that Steve gets. Chill <laughs> with that. Chill with that. That's hilarious. All right, so let's move on. The next one here I have is one of my favorite remakes. Absolutely great film. Really love and enjoy it. Um, it is the remake, Tom Savini's remake of Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, it's a great remake. It really that was is well one done. of the better ones ever. Very well done. Because one of the things that they changed from the original, which I actually like, is the annoying Barbara chick was no longer as annoying. Very true. She's now like a... She's ready to fight, pretty much. She's ready yeah. to kick some ass instead of being slapped around by a <laughs> movie. It's Tony Todd. But... Yeah. Everyone else is pretty much the same thing. You know, Cooper is still the same drunken bastard as from the original. Um, Helen's still the same timid woman who's getting slapped around by Cooper. Ben is still, you know, taking charge. Um, Tommy and his girlfriend are still, you know, typically the same type of thing where they're kind of in the middle of it. They don't really want to get involved. Um, Sarah, she's just lying dead and eventually comes a zombie, so we really don't get to see much out of her. Um... But overall, it was solid. They really Dude, did a good I job. I love with the it. farmhouse setting. Board yourself up in a farmhouse, and and uh, that that's it. And 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 that's when when I say like 
a second ago how characters really create a great zombie film. When you're inside that farmhouse, it's the characters who are about to kill themselves, kill each other, you know? And I love that aspect of any zombie film. When a zombie film is done right, it always usually is Nobody because... can ever get along, yeah. Yeah. What I really liked in this one, or I'm going to say this first, how did anybody feel about uh, Bill Mosley playing Johnny in this remake? Bill Mosley's awesome. <laughs> I thought he was, you know, he did good, but, you know, some points I think they just went straight to the point with the whole they're coming to get you, Barbara Lyon. I think they should have saved that a little bit until um, later when they're at the cemetery. I mean, right before you see the car drive and you could hear the first word he says is, they're coming to get you, Barbara. So. Yeah. Maybe Tom Savini should direct the Day, to De Day of the Dead remake. You know, I've always wondered that about Tom Savini. Why hasn't he, you know, done more direction, you know, directed more films? Yeah. Such a good job. He directed, with that. he directed the uh, the Ripper. I know that, but besides that, Nyla, that's really the only few. I think he yeah. directed a se he directed a segment in Theater Bazaar, which was eh, it was all right. And I think he directed a segment in Dead Time Stories, which was awful. I didn't right. care for that at all. While we're on the topic of Night of the Living Dead, did anybody see the 3D movie with uh, Sid Haig? Fuck no. Oh, man. That movie's I couldn't bad. sit through that whole thing. It was such a polished off piece of crap remake. I didn't like the whole thing. The fam there was It's not a group of people now. Now it's a family that Barbara runs into. And, you know, Johnny's a typical jerk from the beginning, but the whole thing with him and the zombies, it's took an... It's taken very differently in this one. Now he's a complete, well, spoiler alert, he's a complete asshole and ditches Barbara, and that's where she has to find the farmhouse, and nobody there is pretty much like, they don't know that the zombies are here, they're just sitting around and watching TV, and eventually, one by one, they start getting, you know, attacked by the zombies, and then eventually Sid Hay comes along. I think if they, I think they just made this movie for the fact that Sid Haig was on the credits for this. It really didn't get it be made. I don't think so. No, it was a bad movie. <laughs> it's fucking bad. I don't like the 3D element of that. The 3D was awful. Yeah. Does anybody want to throw out another one? <laughs> uh, I got more. <laughs> I got Obviously. A whole list. <laughs> uh, next one we have here is um, the Crazies. 2010 remake. I didn't have that on my list. That's pretty crazy. You I couldn't crazy? sit through. <laughs> pretty crazy. Oh. Um, I couldn't sit through I like the it. first part of the movie after the baseball game thing. I couldn't sit through the rest of it. I, you know, I, it's another movie yeah, I watched I, at the cinema, and I walked out feeling a little underwhelmed by it. I wasn't impressed. I hated the ending at first. I hate the fact that it was yeah, I don't like the ending. Yeah, the ending sucked. It pissed me off. It was kind of it's a Hollywood cop out again. You know, I like the ending in the original Romero film so much more. So See, I, I, I've never seen the original in the film, and I was like, "Fuck, really?" So I walked out, shaking my head. The wife didn't really like it either. And then I ended up picking up the DVD later on, watching it again. And you know, it kind of I think it's I think it's a pretty decent film, but it's nothing. Spectacular, in my opinion. It's the ending still bothers me, man. It still bothers me. So, well, what it comes down for me is the fact that the film is super duper predictable. It, it is a yeah, very yeah. very predictable film. I yeah. do like the the way the infected virus people look, and I like the military aspect. You know, the quarantine because that's just awesome. I, the, you know, they have the military guys all in masks and blah 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 and all dark, holding machine guns, and it villainizes them and it actually makes them a villain. I like that about it. But the fact is, dude, the movie's just incredibly predictable. Yeah, yeah. But I do like it. I think it's cool. It's a fun watch. It has its moments. Yeah, I actually like the movie. I didn't like. I, you know, I don't know. I guess I'm I'm more lax on remakes because I I don't know I kind of have a soft spot for remakes I don't completely feel like um you know they're all great but I feel like there is a lot that are you know underestimated and um you know feel they bring more to the table than than they're given credit for 
Um, the Crazies, I thought, was pretty good, considering the original was kind of... Um, the original is a little cheesy. Um, it is a little cheesy. Very low budget. Um, yeah, you know, and... I don't know. I just thought it was done really well. I feel it was one of them films that could kind of really could use a a true reboot. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I really need to sit down and watch it again. I haven't watched that movie in a few years. Like I said, like JP said, though, I totally agree with the you know being predictable. That aspect is kind of a downer to it, and the ending. But overall, the film is it's it's a well made film. It's just an average story because of the predictability. Yeah. Like, the actual movie itself is done, but, yeah, the story does bring it down a little bit, but it's definitely watchable. It's, it's you know... Yeah, it's, I, 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 I do like it. I'm just... There's just... It's and the look of the infected people? Very cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Good film. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. This is one that I haven't seen. I own it. I just picked it up not long ago. Um, I've actually sampled things from it. Uh, but I've never fucking. <laughs> what seen haven't that. you sampled things from? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Um, but yeah, uh, that is Robert De Niro. You already know where this is going. Cape Fear. No, oh, I've seen it. Never seen it. Um, Cape Fear is a movie that uh, a remake that I actually really enjoy more than the original film. Um, brilliant, brilliant performance by Robert De Niro. He's crazy, fucking psychotic. Great direction by Martin Scorsese in that film. Uh, you got who else you got in that film? Nick Nolte, uh, young Juliet Lewis is in that film. Um, Jessica Lange. Uh, it's if you've never seen the film, definitely check it out. It's one of the best remakes in my opinion. And like I said, it's one. It's a better than the original one. It just doesn't happen very often, you know, where you find a remake that you actually like more than the original film. But I mean, in my opinion, there's not yeah. too many that I enjoy more. But this is definitely one of them. It's a, it's more of like a suspense thriller, but it's got horror elements to it, and it's fucking Andy. It's brilliant, man. Brilliant film. Since no one else has seen it, I guess we could probably move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to the next one. Oh, man, I, I don't even really want to move on to this, but I guess we have to. Children of the Corn. Oh. Children of the Corn is... Uh. Is a oh. terrible remake. It really oh. is. <laughs> so bad. The, the fucking character, characters, the characters that they get are, are so bad. Like bad. I swear, someone's in the background, like just the background corn kids, are just chuckling up, laughing because they're in a movie because they couldn't get like real extras. They're probably just everybody's like daughters and sons and shit. And uh. like Isaac is so garbage. And um, who else is garbage? Everybody. <laughs> the thing I love about Isaac from the original, he's such a... The way he's so silent, that makes him so much more intimidating. In yeah. this one, I really don't remember Isaac that well, but all I remember from him is he definitely didn't live up to the same way Isaac from the original did. Oh, yeah. I completely agree. Completely agree. Isaac That's in the awesome. original was probably one of the creepiest kids in a horror movie I've ever yeah. seen. For sure. You know, that's saying a lot for a kid acting in a horror film, but definitely yeah. one of the best kid horror actors. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, seriously, though, the the character, the kid who played Isaac in this one, almost seemed like any anybody in the world could have done better. Yeah. It's very generic. He wasn't playing God, anybody. Yeah. He was just talking. <laughs> just generic. That movie was just. Uh... Fuck. There were some things I liked about it, though. I, I think I remember liking the couple a bit. I hated it, man. I absolutely hated that movie. I it's didn't like, like the way they took it with the wife in like the middle of the movie. I'm not going to spoil anything, but the way they... like The thing they did to her, I really didn't like that. I wish they never would have included it. The original, it. it ended so well. The original, they did it so perfectly, and they saved everything till the end. But in this one, they just, you know, went a whole different park with this and just did their own thing. And you know, I got a lot of shit for spoiling things on here, so I'm not gonna spoil this. But I don't know. I didn't like the way they uh, did the scene with the wife. If anybody else knows what I'm talking about, I can't about. remember it. Well, I'm gonna. Sp- if I say it, I'm gonna spill it, and I remember getting shit the first time for spoiling Screen <laughs> Four, so I'm gonna stay away from that. Yeah, I think everybody can unanimous, unanimous, 
Go ahead. <laughs> Come on, man. Spit it out. Unanimous. Uh, uni- <laughs> no, I don't want. I don't. No, this I don't want to hear a clause in everybody. <laughs> I think that everybody. I'm not agree. saying it because I don't want to hear Clive say, "Look what you did, you little jerk," for the upteenth time. So I'm gonna keep that as that. <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody really likes the remake. I, didn't Tat just say that he likes the remake? Shout out to Tat. Tat to Dorman. Yeah, I think he man. did say he likes the remake. It's interesting. I would like to know why he likes the remake. Tat, if you can comment, uh, comment. Loves the remake, but fuck up. the burning. <laughs> <laughs> that's There's one movie bridge, I have right? to admit that is one movie that I would like to see a remake out of I can Bird. see if if Isaac was a cyborg why he would like it but besides <laughs> that <laughs> children of the corn in space mecha corn <laughs> <laughs> this time the corn's robotic <laughs> okay, okay so let's ridiculous. just move on because this is going out. Metal cornfields. All right, moving on. Um, this is a one that's actually really new. Uh, I have seen unanimously. it recently. Um, unanimously. There we go. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't do it. Later. No, um, <laughs> this is one that uh, I saw recently. I really enjoyed. Um, I'm... I'm I'm willing to speak for most of the panel to say I think they enjoyed it, except maybe with moods. I know he had some things he disliked. Um, but the Evil Dead remake. Fucking love it. Very good. It's so Very good, good, man. Remake. There's one scene good. that ruins it, and it doesn't ruin it. It's just one scene that sucks. And yeah. that's you it. Know, and that's the thing, man, but that scene is so shitty. <laughs> that it's, like, it's just so shitty. It is bad. Uh, no, it's not even like it's a bad scene. It's just really, really poor. And fuck me if it doesn't happen right before like the full climax of the film, right? It's yeah, just where kind of all crazy. kind of awesome stuff happens. Dude, yeah, I love the like, blood rain. Fox the blood sleep. rain was so cool. The blood I rain admit, and though, the fucking... I have to admit, that movie is really, really well done. It um, is. I, exterior I, shots outside with the yeah. fucking... Nasty, musty leaves and the rain and the just, that looks yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ever we've talked a million times about how well the gore effects are done. I, I think they did a really good job with that. Now, as for the brother in the film, I didn't like him in the movie at all. I don't um, know why, what everybody's beef with him is. I don't know. Like, I just exactly. I, I noticed like a lot of him. people don't like him. Yeah, there's some. I even said to my buddy when we were watching the theater, I'm like, I don't like this guy, and he's like, me either. It was weird. I don't know. I couldn't really pinpoint what it was, but there was something about his character that it really annoyed me. And then when he tries to pull off that MacGyver shit, I'm like, that is just so that, fucking... Yeah, that's... I mean, this guy, there's no way this guy's building fucking batter or, you know, whatever the fuck. He becomes, you know, a doctor. I don't know a lot about, like, electricity and stuff, but I take it that that's actually not possible to do, right? I don't fucking know. I don't think so. I have no I idea. I think that not. It's so stupid. It just seems it was really dumb. And then all of a sudden, the final... You know, the scene in the film is just, it's really good. Like, the raining blood and, and, the, and the gore. Oh, fuck, man. Yeah. It's just it's such a shame they had to put that scene right before that because I was like, fuck this movie. Here's <laughs> one thing that makes this movie so close to the original. Not really with the tone of the actors or the gore, but the fact that the original was a, originally an X-rated movie. This <clears throat> movie, if it kept the amount of gore that they originally shot with and the amount of violence... It would have gone out with an NC-7 rating, so that's one thing I kind of link it with the original and the sequel to is the fact that it was so extreme that they now, had to cut it down eventually. Are we uh, talking about a sequel here, or are we talking about a remake? Because that's no, a we're debate talking about also. The remake. Yeah, but this—that's the debate out there. Is it a sequel? Oh, Evil Dead Two. Man, no, I wish no one could comment down below right now because. Everyone's been talking about this. Like, is it a sequel or is it a fucking remake? There's definitely like hints of sequel there, like the the car, and um, the idea that Ash was gonna show up at the end. That actually happened. That was a, that was a script. That was a thing in the script. Wasn't that cut so, out though? Yeah, it was cut out. Yeah, yeah, it's on the blue. I believe it's on the Blu-ray. No, it's not. No, it's not. I think it. I think some. Like stores like Target sold a steel book. I think that was on like the limited Target steel book. I have that. I couldn't find it on there. I looked. Maybe it's an Easter egg or some shit. I don't know. Maybe it's like Walmart. I'm not 100% sure. I have to look up Cool Looters archives and find that out again. <laughs> uh, I just like how 
how much I just had a great experience watching that in a theater, especially with the little seven year old sitting in front of me, like scared to death and just you know, if you would just take out that scene where the fucking dude pulls the MacGyver stuff, I think it I think it would be everybody's like favorite movie this year. Uh that's yeah, I really so, enjoyed it. So Danny just um, Danny just messaged me because they can't comment down there, and he said, "Well, you got to remember that uh, Bruce Campbell played MacGyver with his hand chainsaw." Yeah, how oh. exactly does that work? Yeah, so, I mean, Danny, you do bring up a good point. So yeah, fuck Danny, me, right? that's why you need to be on here, bud. <laughs> so, yeah, like how exactly saying. does well, that fucking chainsaw thing work? Totally totally maybe it was a, maybe it was a homage. You can't always think, well. Yeah, well, you know, he wouldn't think of that, and he wouldn't do that, or whatever. Okay, no shit, but... they probably wouldn't do that. Most likely, <laughs> they're not gonna have fucking zombies coming out of the ground either. But it's a okay. fucking movie. So. Play, playing devil's advocate, advocate with that too, though, it was the way that it was done with the music and the you know slowness. It just it just came off corny as hell. Yeah, and that's we talked about that before. I said the same thing. It was totally. It slows down the movie. It was really fucking corny and. Not well done, and the music is just come on, get the fuck out of here. Okay. Um, but Danny does; he actually does say that it's he, it's a sequel, straight up. All so, right, so why the hell are we talking about it right now then? Okay, man, you <laughs> let's guys move, move on. on. <laughs> um, okay, nineteen eighty-six, I believe. David Cronenberg's The Fly. Fucking this one love it. One of the five. best remakes yeah. ever. Oh shit! Big shout that out. That one has, um, I'm pretty sure, seven, Jeff five. Goldblum, right? Shouts to Big D Crow. What's up, Danny? This was he just requested this one. Um, the Fly. What can I say, man? That movie's brilliant on all grounds. I just I mean, watched it recently. That's the one with uh, Jeff Goldblum, right? Yeah. I've seen parts of it. I really like the fact that instead of immediately becoming the Fly, he's gradually becoming the Fly. And that's like, one of the see, cool things about the film, man. It's the it's you body know, horror at its up. best. Mm, it's just yeah. like. Now JP's gonna shit on this like last time, but it's just like Hellraiser and the fact that he was in Hellraiser he was gaining parts of his body. In this one he's losing parts of his body. I fucking love Hellraiser for the fifteenth time. Man. <laughs> man. I have gotta say Straight though, though. Straight the effects in that movie make me Hellraiser gag. is overrated. The the effects are so good in that movie, it actually makes me gag when I watch it. Like I was watching Yeah, dude, and he's pulling the weird. fucking finger and he squeezes it and pus comes out and shit. I'm like anything with pus grosses me out like uh yeah, Dead Alive. Way. I'm the same way, man. Pus oh fuck, the scene in Dead, Dead Alive. My, ugh, that's nasty. <laughs> it's disgusting even thinking about so that shit. It's more disgusting than blood. But, but no, movie, I, I love yeah, the claustrophobic yeah. feel of his little apartment thing where everything's just fucking, he's stuck there deteriorating, just like being, de well, kind of evolving into something else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I like it, it's as simple Those as effects were absolutely that gross. little, you know, that fly got in the machine, and that's what it is. It really is a great story. It's an yeah, original it's so great cool. story. Even though it's a remake, the story yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. fucking amazing. It's so well done. Everything about that film is really good. It's just a brilliant remake. And how many times they say the flesh? <laughs> they the say flesh. the flesh so often. Yeah. And what was it? Brundle, his, Brundle Fly. <laughs> Brundle Fly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just... Uh, you know, and didn't David Cronenberg recently say that he was actually willing to remake Yeah, that? he wanted to, and he, he, the, the studios would not go with his idea. Because he wanted to try something completely different now, didn't he? And they were like, uh. I think so. So, but I think that's really interesting that he's yeah, I would like to see that film because The Fly, in my in my opinion, is one of the best remakes ever. If not, you know, in some people's opinion, maybe it might be, but um, it's better than the original film. It's it's very, you know, it doesn't happen very often. But to Dude, remake, such if a he master, could remake, like, <laughs> if he could remake his remake and make it better. What the fuck would that film be? That would be insane. <laughs> I do worry. I do worry. Like, I hope that he, you know, say perhaps he actually does do it, that he takes the total, you know, practical effects route and don't throw any CGI in that shit because it just wouldn't work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Everybody loves right. the fly. Yeah. The oh, fly is unanimous. Now I got a real fucking turd for you. The next one up <laughs> on the list. You ready for this? The next one up on the list, The Fog. Oh, oh man. I've never even seen the original, but the remake sucks. 
Yeah. I, I hated that. Fog. I oh, would watch the trailer I would put all the, the fog time in my TV. top five least favorite remakes. Oh, it's so bad. It's just. I used to fog. see that trailer on TV all the time and just seeing that face in the trailer that make me just like want to hit the TV screen. It was so bad. Even from a young age, I really didn't like it. Okay, love yes, we see. It. Love it. No we lie. see your DVD, love Clive. Good for you. Love it. He got like seven copies. I got three <laughs> copies. Of the Do movie. you really? Three. Three different ones. So you really like the remake? No, no, no. I have three of the original, not the remake. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. I yes, three of the original and seven okay. of the remake. Okay, I just want to confirm something. John Carpenter actually did produce this film, right? Which blows me away. Um, but I, I wanted to see how, how well it did because it is really a stinker. This movie apparently cost $18, mi 18 million dollars to make, and it bought or it grossed 46 million at the box office. Are you fucking kidding me? How well, there is a lot of stupid. Well well well. It's fucking Superman from Smallville. Okay, it's fucking <laughs> Superman. It's that I just I, I just realized terrible. fucking Superman. Take the shit to Smallville. I'm sorry. Oh, hold just... up, hold up, hold up. I think we need to interrupt this conversation to talk about the news that came out last week. Does All right, horror news. What are we talking about? What is the news? Another Fog movie? The news is how many videos of... <laughs> how many videos were in your sub feed about Ben Affleck being the new Batman? <laughs> Oh boy! I counted over forty in my feed. I was Jesus. my whole feed with Ben Affleck, like Daredevil is Batman. Oh fuck! Some of the headers were pretty funny, but come on, guys. That's been going on for a while. Come like, on, I've guys. Nothing else on YouTube besides this whole Man of Steel Batman There's shit. Other things to talk about than Ben Affleck and Batman. yeah, the like Fog remake. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the a fog piece of remake shit. Fucking ass. Yeah, okay, but All next right, up, um, I don't even want to talk about the fog anymore. Moving no. up to the next one, one I like that you guys seem to love the trash. That is Friday the Thirteenth. Who? I who don't does like that? this one. I really Dude, don't like. We're gonna it. have to take a few seconds for this one. But okay, right, Steve, Friday the Thirteenth. In my opinion, it is another installment with a. It, it's not really a real remake to me. It's just kind of another installment. So therefore, I like it. There's a few things I don't like about it. One thing I don't like about it is that the best <laughs> part of the movie is the opening. The the the, be the opening has better characters, yep. better kills, and all around just feels more like a Friday the Thirteenth film. The other thing I don't like is this stupid underground lair, <laughs> and then the kidnapping yeah. is retarded to me. Yeah, that Jason really does not kidnap me. people. I cannot and, buy into this angle, man, of Jason being. That smart, like building this underground lair. Like we tried. Hey, to no, hold this up. Out. We don't know if you built it. Let's just leave well, it at that. Okay, somebody so, built but, it. I mean, someone did. But it's the fact that, like, you know, there's just kidnapping and keeping a girl alive. That's not Jason, man. That's not Jason at all. That is you Jason immediately at all, kill her. Man. It makes yeah. no sense. And, and especially since he ran at her, and you're like, oh, she's about to get fucked up. And then yeah. it's like cut, and you're like, "Well, what the fuck?" <laughs> yeah. But, you, but you, know, you notice something? Have you guys noticed the fucking trend though? It's so blatantly obvious. With every single horror movie remake, their goal is to make the killer more vile. What can we add to his history to make him even more fucked up? They did it with all of them. They turned fucking Freddy into a child fucker. They turned Jason into a fucking kidnapping, like, fucking weirdo that kidnaps and tortures women. They turn fucking Michael Myers into a super psycho lunatic that fucking is, is over the board violent instead of being creepy. They tried to add something to each one of them to make them more scary by adding something that's scary in life, a fucking okay. child predator, a kidnapper. I, I, I disagree about scary. Jason, though, because they made him weaker by having him kidnap, kidnap, kidnap the woman because yeah. he reminded him of his mother, you know? She reminded really him of his mother. Much. And it takes his it takes his power, it takes his violence, it takes his balls away, you know? Totally, man. He was way scarier just rolling around in the bush and hacking motherfuckers yeah, up. Yeah, you want him to kill stuff. anybody no matter what. I know in, in part opinion, two 
Ginny puts on the thing and confuses him a bit because she kind of looks like his mother, but that was only going to last so long. He was about to slash her up anyway. Definitely. I do agree, though. The beginning of that film, JP, is the best part about the movie. It is and, great. I love that. You know, movie. we were talking last night, and I was watching the movie, and I didn't, I didn't really notice it before, but fuck, man. That movie probably has the longest intro or setup to a film ever before the credits roll. It's like 25 minutes into the film before it's like Friday the 13th. So yeah, it's almost yeah, like two different really films. Long. Like the beginning 25 that, minutes is brilliant. It's, it's actually really good. And then as soon as the credits roll, <laughs> the movie goes right downhill in my opinion. It's not as good. You know, yeah. so. also, Everything I was too polished. That, yeah, uh, that's a good word. That's a good also, word. Also, like yeah. The, um, oh, thank you very much. The characters but... that you get afterwards, after the opening, are way worse than the characters you get before the opening. I think they're some of the worst in the series, period. Totally. They, totally do, the, uh, they do this with all horror movies, like the remakes today. They take a bunch of, like, preppy, you know, high school or college <laughs> kids. They put them in, like, a nice-ass house with a nice-ass car yachts and everything and they just want to see them get you, killed you know what off. I it's did the like, same though? thing every time yeah yeah I like the fact that the fucking whole town knew something was up they knew not to go into those woods it almost seemed like he's been doing this forever because they all just know that you know there's something up with this place well that um, was even in the original with the old guy well yeah but that was just the crazy old town drunk this, this now it just seems like everybody's kind and, of new. And JP, you brought up a good point before that we haven't touched on about, you know, the one guy that's actually out there looking for his missing sister. Well, she actually turns out to be alive. There's yeah. No one else. Why could love. it have been no the one else other guy's brother or day. something? Except for yeah. this dude, <laughs> is fucking looking for his sister, and she's actually alive. <laughs> what? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's 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 weird. I mean. Yeah, you know, on, and you know something I also did movie like movie about stuff. it though, which I know a lot of people don't like, is I like that Jalen Jason is is quick, and I like that he um, is an archer. I, I know a lot of people don't like that, but to me, it makes sense that he would be good at that. I can just picture little young Jason being good at archery. It just totally makes sense to me. It makes sense that he'd be out there like hunting shit and eating it. But the thing was, he actually was, though, because you mentioned that... That was something like, interesting, to Brody see him, like, like, the original films. So he was actually, like, you know, a competitive <laughs> archer, which mm -hmm. they never touched on in the original series until this film, and he's like... It, at first, it kind of fucked me up. I was like, what? He's that good? <laughs> but then... <laughs> but it does make sense, because they actually did kind of show that before in the original franchise, right? So Well, I don't know in the original franchise, but for sure in the remake... When they first walk into that one cabin and it says Voorhees on the butt on the bed, yeah, up on the side is the archery tree. Maybe they don't. Maybe I'm just getting it confused, but I don't know. I mean, let's like with, let's be honest. Jason has already been always been pretty accurate with his killing techniques. Like what you said, JP. The fact that he's a lot more quicker in this one. You see that same part in the trailer where the girl's crawling away from him and he's like wielding his machete up and down. I actually thought that was pretty cool what they did with that. They made him a lot more, you know, a lot better with what he was doing instead of making it a little more amateur. Yeah, and I actually like Derek Mears as Jason too. There's just if I think the film could have been awesome if just a handful of things were changed around. Um, I still like it a lot though, and I'm looking forward to the new sequel that they're gonna do. Uh, everybody needs to say, "Hey, let's put Jason in the snow." It should be cool. Because Blood would and be Snow is awesome. Like it's frosty ass hockey mask. Everybody would love that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Unless they actually go through with that prequel found footage shit, then I would never want to see that again. That's ever. fucking. That's they, gonna they kill any, fucking do that. any momentum that the reboot of that franchise will ever have if is if they do that idea. Or Snow if they, Island, if they, they do Jason it. versus Jarvis, that'd be kick ass at the most. I wish they would bring the Jarvis character back, even if it isn't you know Feldman or Tom Matthews or whoever. In the new sequel, I, I just lo always liked that character. Feldman said that he would actually do it. I know yeah, that's fucking JP, crazy. JP told me you can never really you know trust what Corey Feldman would say. Well, yeah, him saying that. he could do it is one thing, but him saying that he's going that it's happening is another thing. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know if Paramount would actually go through with another actual sequel rather than uh, another reboot. Also, everybody go to Crystal Lake. Um, what Memories. the hell is it? 
Yeah, Crystal Lake Memories. Just look it up on Google. Google it. Pre-order the documentary. Seven hours long. Four hours bonus features of interviews. Support this documentary. It should be really awesome. I know everybody here probably got it pre-ordered. I still need to do it. But if you get it straight from the site, that's the only place you can get that uh, bonus disc from. Yeah, so, good so you don't want to miss out on that. Yeah, I already pre-ordered mine. Yeah, me too. Me too. I still have to. Me I'm too. excited. Okay, so let's okay, go let's, home uh, Friday the 13th. Yeah, let's keep it moving. We still have a lot more to go. Um, the next one on here is one that I haven't seen. I've only seen parts of it. I love the original. Huge fan of the original, actually. And that is 1986's Fright Night. <laughs> 1986's Fright Night? The remake came out in 86? Oh, why am I talking about the original? Yeah, uh, the remake came out in what, 2010? 11. 2011. 2011. 2011. I haven't seen it either, so I really oh, don't know about it. Dude, well, it's like Moods' favorite remake. Oh, serious? let's get the party started on this one. First off... <laughs> um, <laughs> Again with the casting. I uh, like the casting besides the lead vampire. Colin Farrell. And I didn't hate him fuck my life, man. He's <laughs> not believable at all in the movie. But you know in the thing McLovin in the movie? What? They actually got McLovin in that movie? Yeah. yeah. And he's not good. He's just not good. He's almost too fucking dorky. He's just not good. Um the movie was weak all around in my opinion, yeah. man. It was weak everywhere. Shitty, thick, bad acting. Fuck Fright Night Remake. Bad acting, come on. Movie. Come on. Yes, Matt McLevin's that. horrible. He's horrible in that movie. Colin Farrell's not believable. He's not believable. <laughs> McLevin is fucking That's because he's on the fucking vice. That. He's on the fucking beaches of Miami Vice. Killing crime, that's why. <laughs> Dude, he's I mean, fucking Miami Vice. He's fucking Don Johnson. What do you expect? Yeah, man. Don Johnson's the vampire film. now. Dude, to be honest, I don't really love the original film. Like, I like it, but I don't love it. So the remake to me, it was like, hey, it, it was all right. I enjoyed it. I have a special place with the original film because it's like the movie that got me into horror films like in 85. So, But it's not even that, though. I really do enjoy the, that film. I think the characters are amazing. Evil Ed's awesome, that film. Really? Amazing? Yeah. I wouldn't say I think amazing. Evil, I think Dude, I, all right, I'll say this. I think, the, I think the lead character of the remake is better than the lead character of the original. Oh, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's pretty oh, crazy. Fucking, you think Colin Farrell is no, better? No, not the fucking vampire. Oh. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> Bold statement, gentlemen. <laughs> Man. Uh... Who we talk? Oh, oh, Charlie, or oh, Charlie Brewster's character? Yeah. The remake? You think he's better than the? What's the guy's name that played in the original? I always forget his fucking name. I'm bad with names. But anyways, I don't think so, man. I do. I don't know. I I think everybody else is better in the original except for him. I didn't I didn't wow. really care for him in the original. Too much. That's interesting. <laughs> no, I would. You know, I mean, what like. Obviously, Colin Farrell. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of. But I just thought like they. Why did they pick? McLovin to play Evil Ed. Like, I, I just don't understand that casting. Like, I understand he's a dork, skinny, kind of fits the... Who would you have casted? Fuck, I don't know. Maybe the fat kid from <laughs> Superbad? <laughs> that would have been going that's, to that's, that's, like, the worst casting ever. Yeah, you know? I wouldn't cast him. I don't know. Stephen Jeffries is a weird dude, and I think oh, that really? McLovin is kind of a weird dude, so I could kind of understand I kinda, what they was trying there. I would actually cast the one kid, uh... I don't remember his name, but the uh, one kid from Zombieland, uh, he would have been. You know who they cool. should have cast? <clears throat> you know who they should have cast as the main guy? They should have cast freaking Shia LaBeouf. No. Shia LaBeouf. Oh, Dude, I no. love Shia LaBeouf. I think he's awesome. Are you I serious? I have nothing else to say about this. We'll end it on Shia LaBeouf being cast in Fright Night. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Fright Night, man. You guys are fucking yeah. butchering his name so bad, it's hilarious. I don't know. Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. He did good in Disturbia. Yeah. And he's the fucking Fright Night is kind of like a Disturbia movie, oh, so I figured it would work. <laughs> he's the reason I don't want to watch the Transformers. Dude, you know, let me be honest here. Fright Night, I seen one time when it came out, and I wanted to fucking hate it because I seen the previews when I went to go see Scream 4, and I was like, this is fucking bullshit. This 
this is like a terrible looking remake. It looks nothing like the original. And then I seen it and it surprised me. So that's why I like it. Okay, so we got one that's on kind of likes it. Steve, what did you said you didn't like it? I didn't see it yet. So, oh, you didn't. See it. And I really don't plan on seeing it. So why you're taking Moods' word for it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not well, really good. What even what I seen, I only seen about ten fifteen minutes of it, and just seeing Colin Farrell's the vampire just. I, all right, hold on. Everybody like, keeps the saying vampire, this thing about, hold on. Who the fuck is Colin Farrell anyway? Like, dude, like the <laughs> original vampire. The original Colin vampire Farrell, was fucking doctor. creepy. That dude was fucking creepy looking. Like he had a unique vibe. Like he wasn't like a real big actor. Dude, like you, just I don't know, man. I just, just put think, Colin Farrell the, there. I just fucking Miami Vice. That's all I gotta say. Miami Vice. I don't even know that what that means. Okay, I can just I can I can just picture him as the vampire in a fucking white suit sliding across a Ferrari hood. It's just no good. <laughs> it's fucking no good. He's fucking okay. Miami Vice vampire. So Danny just commented and said that JP, you're crazy. Oh, they can comment what? now. Well, no, he's just he's texting me right now. He's saying that uh, Charlie Brewster was way better in the original than the remake. So, and he probably was to most people. <laughs> okay, hey, let's. I, Hey, we'll everybody has their weird thing that they fucking like more than other people. And yeah. I guess Fright Night Remake is mine. All right, we all have our different tastes. I guess, I all guess. Right. <laughs> okay, moving we all on. all have different tastes in life. <laughs> the next one we have is 1999's The Haunting. Never seen it. Never seen it. Really? I have seen this I one. I hear that movie is like garbage CGI. It is pretty bad. It's bad. I will I will not lie. The movie sucks. It does suck. <laughs> but the cool thing about the movie, the cool thing about it, um, it is the basis for I think the second Scream movie. Or not Scream, uh Scary Movie. That movie is the one that it's mainly based around. Uh that's like the main storyline that, that's basically spoofed in it. Um what, which house? was always the cool whole thing to me about the house. It. Yeah, yeah, and uh, what was the guy's name? Um Crane, Hugh Crane, Hugh, Hugh Crane, who the butt some shit? Like, who would he play in? Uh, like, if you link it to Scary Movie, then I could probably yeah. understand, like, who would he play? The butt okay, go, the, the big hand. weird ghost at the end that falls down the stairs, that was based from The Haunting, Um, that ghost, <laughs> and that whole house, and the painting like on the wall, and too. fucking the, the fireplace, and all that shit was based off of um, The Haunting. What about, what about the, uh, the knock? in Scary Movie 2. Was that any reference I to think the there thing? was a knocker, but obviously it's not a big ball sack. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that, so wait a minute, why difference. are we talking about Scary Movie 2? Because it's uh, because it's based off of The Haunting, which is the movie we're talking about. That's my only reason for actually liking the movie. Has anyone here Scary Movie 2 is based me, off of like Scary Movie 2. Has anyone here besides me seen the original Haunting from 1963? No. It's brilliant. It's actually one of my favorite ghost films. It's awesome. The remake of this one, man, <laughs> oh, is so bad. I fucking despise this movie. Um, first of all, it has fucking uh, that blonde-haired geek, um, fucking Owen Wilson in it. It's horrible. Dude, I, I, why do you hate Owen Wilson? No, Owen Wilson's you. not Owen bad. Owen Wilson is fucking he hates awesome. He fucking nose, that's why. <laughs> no, I remember Moon saying he hates Owen Wilson. The nose. I, love I, Owen Wilson. I like Owen Wilson. I can't stand him because he's not funny. funny. He's not he is funny. funny. He's he is funny. 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 He's so I, funny. I, I, okay, for once I'm going to side with JP on this and say Wedding that Crashers Owen Wilson is funny. one of the worst the, and high, most overrated film comedies I've ever seen in my life, man. That movie is fucking terrible. What is it? Wedding Crashers. I've never even seen that. But I, always, I always movie. bring that up because everyone always talks about how much they love that film, and I'm like, that movie is not funny. It's <laughs> poorly done. They have a montage of Wedding Crashers. They took a good idea about guys crashing weddings, and they made it into a fucking love story. They threw a montage of them crashing weddings in the middle of the film, had a cameo by fucking Will Ferrell, and then that movie just completely was horrible. If it was Will Ferrell and... I'm okay, let's bringing... get back to horror. Okay, one, th one more thing about Wedding Crashers, though. If they we're, use... we're burning up time. If they used... Yes, uh... we are. We're talking about Owen Wilson? Shit. If they used Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, it would have been better, but let's move on with the, ha the happening or haunting. This conversation has gone down awfully fast. The haunting <laughs> sucks. I don't even want to talk about the happening. All right, we're not, I mean, we're, we're not talking about the happening. 
happening, and we're done with the haunting. We're moving on. The next one, a film that I have not seen the remake of, but I've seen the original of. Um, although I own the remake, just haven't had a chance to check it out, and that is The Hitcher. Okay, so the hit, the, the original Hitcher is fucking awesome. It's like one of the best road horror ever, and awesome. you guys know how much I love road horror. I watched the remake the other night, and it's just a not well done remake. It's it's not completely garbage either, but uh, there's like a, it seems to be a lot of plot holes and just all around just not as good. What do you guys think of it? Never seen the original or the remake, so you never seen the original. You need to get on that. I wasn't. Uh, I was not. I've only seen the remake of The Hitcher once, and I was not impressed with it. Yeah, it just all. leaves you feeling very unimpressed. Yeah, it just it was just a oh, pretty yeah. shitty remake, you know, so unnecessary. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so, um, the Hitcher remake. In, uh, one thing that I found interesting was you're kind of following more of the female character instead of the male, which I didn't like. Also, I liked uh, liked um, what's his face? There's, come on, somebody help me out here. From the original, the main guy. See Thomas Howell? Was that him? Yeah. <laughs> yep. What do you think of the... Wait, so that's it? Nobody else seen it? I just... I, I really don't remember it a whole lot, but I just remember not liking the remake and just finding it not... They didn't bring anything new to the table. I mean, they even had the scene where... Um, you know, the classic scene in, in The Hitcher with uh, Ty and... The girl to the fucking rakes or whatever, right? Did they do that in Joyride also? I think that I they think so. did, actually, yeah. Sure they did. But they did it poorly in the remake. I remember going... I remember laughing about it, how poorly it was done, so... Yeah. But... So, yeah, the, the Hitcher really isn't... I don't know. From what Mood says, the Hitcher 2 is actually better than the remake. I have yeah, the Hitcher two. Yeah, the Hitcher 2, like that sequel that came way later, was actually... I think it came after the remake. I swear, I think it did. I, for some reason, I think it did too, man. But it wasn't bad. The, the chick that was in that movie was actually really hot. So. Yeah. All right, um, let's keep it moving along. Uh, the next one we have here is one of my favorite remakes and arguably one of the... Well, not even arguably. Probably the... Well, no, I have to say arguably... Um, arguably one of the best remakes in the last 10 years. Psycho. Um, okay. No, I'm just kidding. Was, that <laughs> one in the last 10 years. Um, that was like, it was fucking, it was like 15 years ago. It was. Um, spit it out. It is. <laughs> no, it is The Hills Have Eyes, one of my favorites. That was a phenomenal. Definitely movie. one of my favorites too. I actually think it might. It's in my top five favorites. I love oh, the Hills Have Eyes remake. Praise the Lord, we're all in agreement. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know remake. what I can't. I don't even know what it is about it. It's just awesome. It's fucking savage. The music I it loved is. in it. The you know once the killers would come and that like bass music would come up. I love that. Yeah, I thought that the was, music was really I good in um it, the it remake. Really was oh, a. That a remake that actually followed the story pretty well and just fucking tried to amp up stuff and just, you know... My one complaint is... is is a complaint at one time, but it also I kind of like it in another time, is the the mutants are actually, like, deformed, gross-ass mutants with, like, giant heads and stuff. And in the original, the mutants are just unusual-looking people. You know, yeah, with scars can, uh, and stuff. Okay, yeah, exactly. But I, I gotta admit like that guy. Time. That guy sitting in the chair explaining to the one character why scary, everyone's man. like this. That was scary, and he's like, "And you destroyed our homes." Boom, boom. Yeah, definite boom. social commentary on that. I thought that was creepy. That. that was creepy. That was very. That was the creepiest thing about the whole yeah, movie. Yeah, that is a good part, man. I agree highly with that. That was awesome. Yeah, and it's just I remember the uh, the Claire girl from Lost, Claire, <clears> who, the, the younger sister. Man, that scene with her in the camper thing is just brutal. It's hard for yeah, me to watch. That was I really very, like very good. That was that was for some people that could be considered disturbing for you know, somebody actually like showing pointing a gun right to their face and then shooting it. That's pretty hardcore for that. Yeah. 
brutal. I thought the I thought the scene when the the father gets tortured and burned and shit was fucking crazy bad. Everybody, Everybody just watching their the, dad get so burned. So horrible, man. You're just like, oh, yeah, brutal. I like the I dynamic know. between. I like the dynamic between the um. The young son and then the sister's boyfriend, how he's kind of like a pussy at first, and I actually like that. Yeah, in the beginning, well. you know, he's not like, he's, a, he's he doesn't like guns, but then at the same yeah. time, he's blowing somebody <laughs> up with a shotgun. He's kind of a badass by the end of the film. Yeah. Okay, so I have some, uh, some comments I want to pull up that I'm getting from people. Zach says, best remake ever. Laura says, the original was better. I know Zach always says it's his favorite remake. I mean, so yeah. different different votes out there. People uh people prefer the original. People prefer the remake. Um, I like them about the same, man. I don't. I I don't know, man. I think I'm a little partial to the to the Wes Craven film, but I really do so love. Gritty. it. I think it's great. They're just both good films, you know. It's just yeah, they didn't fuck they up really enough. All right, uh, let's keep it moving. We're going to go ahead right into the next one, which ties into it, and that is The Hills Have Eyes Part 2, another great remake that I also highly enjoy. I mean, but do you really count that as a remake? Um, it's it's almost like Halloween 2, where it says it's the sequel to the remake, but it really doesn't have that much to do with it. In the sequel, it's followed the same sort of story as the original, but this one, it's more of like... Uh, people just wandering in the desert that are part of the military and they end up being hunted down by these people living in the hills. So I, I really don't necessarily like the Hills Have Eyes Part 2, but I actually really like it, man. I like it better than the fucking original. The original one's not very good at all. Oh, yeah. The only yeah, reason Wes Craven that made that sequel was because he needed money. That's yeah. the only reason he made that yeah, movie. He didn't even want to do that movie, man. And, and it shows. That movie's Pretty piss poor, man. Yeah. But I, I mean, a lot of people shit on The Hills Have Eyes 2, like the remake one. I think it's actually pretty watchable, man. I don't know. I, I thought the gore was decent in it. Yeah. I thought the the one part that stands out the most is the one dude in the porta potty. I thought that was probably the one scene I remember most yeah. of The Hills Have Eyes. Yeah. Where it's like, oh my god, who is he? Shit man, the barbarian. Who? How the hell do I know? Um, the commenting might be back up, by the way. Um, I was getting some errors on YouTube a few minutes ago, and the errors have gone away. Uh, and it's let me refresh now, so I think people might be able to comment now. If you're out there watching, you would like to comment, feel free to comment. We are reading the comments as we uh, we do the show. Um, if yeah, they're showing up for us, uh, they have been showing up for a while. But um, that I got one out of the works now. But. One more thing I have to say about it. I think they went a little too extreme with the makeup as opposed to the first remake. The first remake they didn't use that much, but this one, the actors were covered in all this makeup, and it was really not needed. Yeah. Anybody else agree? I, yeah, I kind of agree. Yep. I want to throw out Mother's Day. Uh, basically, it has a premise... I mean, kind of similar to the original, and this one's more of a remake in name only, too. Um, I, I watched it the other night again, and I gotta say, man, I fucking love that movie, man. That's a good fucking remake. Um, I totally agree. I, I, think, I think the act, I think everyone in that film does a really good job, you know, and I just, I don't know, man. It's it's a brutal film, man. It's fucking nasty. I love the ending, too. The ending is kick I love the ending, yeah. Because yeah, it's sure. one of those films you're just like, shit, man, really? You know, I don't want to give it away, but it's it totally. I said that out loud. I'm like, really? That's awesome. You know, and I love shit like that. And you have, know, have you seen it? Any any of you two? No. Nope. I haven't seen the uh, remake. The original is one of my favorites. Period. Dude, the, you gotta um, check out the remake though. Yeah, the remake awesome. is good, man. Um, I, just you know, really, it's brutal, man. It's brutal. One of the things that me and Moods was talking about it was. I'm not going to spoil a whole lot because you guys haven't seen it. Um, but the fact is that you, you, throughout the film, you kind of see that even though there's these terrible villains, the people that are being vilified, you know, you know, captured and held hostage, really aren't that much better of people than the people that are capturing them. And yeah. it really is it's a home invasion film. Um, there's some brutal scenes, brutal deaths, and uh, some just... Things that make you think about the human 
nature and what we're willing to do to survive yeah. and uh, I mean, what we're doing, willing to do to get ahead and to cheat and lie and steal. Mm -hmm. I just, I like the fact that, you know, they didn't have to, I mean, there was some pretty nasty deaths, like you mentioned. Uh, I won't bring up any of the deaths, but um, I do want to talk about the one part I thought was really, really nasty and really showed the nastiness of the, you know, the, the people invading their house, you know, um, was the scene where the one brother, he's upstairs and he's been shot and he's basically on his way out and he's a virgin. And they want... Dark. They want to oh, fucking Lord. get him laid before he dies. So basically what they do is they put a couple of the guys against each other downstairs and they make these two guys fight. Yeah, Loser's wife gets the Loser's taken. wife goes upstairs and fucks this And dude. mind, these guys are friends. These guys yeah, are friends. They're friends. And I just thought that was so fucking brutal, man. Like, yeah. And their fight that they have, they go balls to the wall. Like, it's a nasty-ass fight. Yeah. And, and it's really well done. Rebecca well, I'm glad Tavali. I know the whole story and synopsis in detail now. <laughs> no, that's not even like anything at all. Dude, really. there's it's twists and like turns in this man. I'm not even going to bring up any of that stuff, but yeah. I do want to mention that Rebecca De Mornay's uh, performance as the mother. So good. Yeah. So good. You, you like know, want to hate her, nice but you still kind of like her. Yeah, that's the thing, because she's like when she's upstairs and she's cutting the cake and feeding people a cake and ice cream, and you're just like, wow, she's pulling off that niceness really well. And then she's got the – she flips it, man. She's so fucking brutal. Just a great movie. Great movie. It really is. It was one of my favorites of, of uh, the year that it came out. Yeah, so I have to check that one out. I have been yeah, wanting to see too. it for quite a while. Anybody comments about that one? Um, let me I check don't think my people can comment yet. I just checked. Uh, well, I got people on Facebook hitting me. I think we're all doing the Facebook thing. Um. I've got Laura and Zach hitting I'm me checking up, you and too. I know yeah, you have yeah. Dan hitting you up. <laughs> so yeah, Dan's cool. But, um, but let's keep it moving, though. Uh, the next one we have here is this fantastic piece of great cinema, starring Paris Hilton, House <laughs> of Wax. Oh man, oh, man. I it's didn't even see that, that remake. I saw the Vincent Price remake. Yeah. The Vincent Price remake is, is good from 53. Um, I didn't like House of Wax the remake when it first came out, and I recently revisited it, and I gotta say, it's a lot better than I remembered it, man. It's kind of a guilty pleasure watch. There's nothing better than watching Paris Hilton die brutally and just so <laughs> miserably in that film. But her death in the film is fantastic. They, they obviously gave her the best one. She went out with a bang. It's watchable, man. I'm sorry, but I know this movie gets a lot of fucking hate, but... I recently revisited it and didn't hate it, man. Yeah, I, I got it. I'll have really to go well. ahead and give it another run through, but man, usually man, when I've been watching the Wax remake, I usually watch the uh, Vincent Price movie because even that is a remake of the movie Mystery of the Wax Museum. So yeah, yeah, it's a brilliant. And it was one of the first 3D movies ever. Vincent Price is amazing in that film. Mm -hmm. I just love his performance, man. He's awesome. Classic Vincent Price. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Um, let's go ahead and keep it moving along. The next one we have here is 2001's House on Haunted Hill. I heard it was very bad. I used to like this a lot as a kid. Yeah, I heard a lot of negative wasn't. reviews of this one. I used to wow. like it a lot. I thought it was actually scary when I seen it back when I was, you know, whatever age, 10, 11 or something. And um, I haven't seen it since. And then I watched it last October, and I was like, yeah, it was all right, I guess. I, I kind of didn't like it so much as I, I heard in my something. Memory. I heard something about the DVD where it's one of those interactive DVDs where you get to choose the ending or something like that. I'm not 100%, but that's what I've heard of the DVD or the Blu-ray. It's one of those interactive, you know, movies that you have to choose the ending for. I'm it's not another sure if that's one of the, true or not. It's another remake to me that uh, has really odd casting. I know I'm, I keep bringing up the casting, but it's a big <laughs> deal to me. And this movie had Chris Kattan in the film. You know, he was the guy from Saturday Night Live. I thought that was so weird casting right there. Um, Tate Diggs was in the film. And I'm like, okay. But uh, the guy that plays, like, the Vincent Price character, whatever his... Uh, I can't remember what his fucking name is, man. 
I know who you're talking about, though. But... Yeah, you know the guy that plays the main... He's, I think he's actually really good in the film, to be honest, but... Yeah. Um, I haven't watched it in a while. I, it's been it's been a little bit since I've seen it, but... Uh, you bring up know. an interesting point about um, the casting being a big deal, because when you think about it, we're talking about remakes here. So when you have these characters in your head and they're already familiar and then you do a remake, the casting has to be perfect for you if you really love the original characters. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. By the way, I'm getting comments from Laura. She says that um, she has the interactive DVD, and it's the Blu-ray. Choosing the death scenes, or choosing the scenes ruins the film. And it has this syringe-shaped loading bar. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was right on that one. Okay. Okay. So uh, we move on. I actually like that movie. I want to say something about it before we move on. I actually really did like that movie, and I tell you what I liked about it. It's the first film that I remember seeing where that effect was used. Um, or no, no, I'm lying. Yeah, well, actually, no, yeah, it was the first one I've seen where the effect was used. But I also know that it was also used in Jacob's Ladder uh, before that. Um, but it's that effect where, like, things are, like, like somebody can be walking at normal speed, and then, like, parts of their body can be, like, fucking moving, like, rapidly quick. And they did that with the head and the arms of the characters in uh, the film, and I just really liked that. I really thought that that was really creepy and unique, and just was something that always stuck out to me. And even the backstory of um, the house itself and, and, you know, why it was created and, uh, the security system, just a lot of things about that movie. I just yeah, really, really enjoyed. I do kind of like that. I just think what it had some bad CGI, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was kind of the start of it too, right? Mm. Early two thousand CGI, poor. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and keep it moving because we still got a good list of about twenty more to run through. Um. Next one should keep us talking for a little while, and I know Zach's been waiting for this one. You already know where this is going. <laughs> Probably Halloween. Halloween, yep. Halloween. Fucking love it, dude. Halloween is yeah, one of I my like favorite that. remakes. Oh. This is really? probably one of the biggest, one of the films that totally is separated. You know, a lot of people love it, and a lot of people hate it, and I'm a lover of it. I love yeah. the backstory. Yeah, I know a lot of people so I understand. Dope. I understand where people are coming from that you don't need the backstory in the original Halloween. The way the film is yeah, perfect. you don't need it in the original don't Halloween. Need it. But since but it's you know remake, so many years later, why not? Why not explore why, it? If Rob Zombie had it just made a full-on remake of John Carpenter's film without a backstory, change up things a little bit, I think it would have been stale. You know, it's just like okay, we just got a full-on shot-for-shot remake, and then it would have turned into Psycho. You know what I'm saying? And I think it was important I to show the backstory, like why. I think, I totally agree. It is very important, and I love that development of Michael Myers' character, and I love the scene, you know, in the bush where he kills that fucking classmate with the stick. That just shows oh how fucking God. nasty and brutal he was as a kid. I like how brutal he is now. Yeah, I, I thought it was. Loved, I love story. I'm sorry, but I, I think it really worked. And I, I thought don't, it was very I important. It. I thought it was very important how they showed, you know, him getting bullied in school till the point where his mom found pictures of, like, dead cats in his backpack. I thought that was very important. Well, let's show, talk like... about that for one second because people say, oh, I, you know, why not, you know, Michael Myers was just supposed to be a random person, a normal kid who just was pure evil. Okay, but I like the idea that, you know, a lot of emotional stuff going on around somebody can turn them into a monster. And um, I think it works. It's it it uses a more scientific approach instead of a you know supernatural, supernatural yeah. approach to it. And mm -hmm. I like that because I really don't straight up believe in like the supernatural stuff too much. So well, you also have to go even back more to find out. You know, uh, what's his name? William Forsythe's character in the movie. That wasn't his original father, and it hit, his original father died, and that's apparently his stepfather or his mom's boyfriend. So yeah. that's one way where, you know, he kind of got messed up in the head because, you know, yeah. his new stepdad's a total Dude. dick. Yeah, his mom's I, a stripper, his sister's a whore. Before like, that, it was I like a true family. Them. Like, before, you know, Ronnie came into the family, they were a true family. And then once his father died and Ronnie came into the family, that's when they became totally dysfunctional and not caring about Here, anything. Here's the thing. Let me go on this tangent. Let me go on this fucking tangent, all right? 
the allure is lost there because, okay, yeah, he had a fucked up childhood. How many films have we seen that done over and over and over and over and over again? What would have been more creative to me is that they would have followed it. The less you know about the family, the more fucked up. It would have been more fucked up if he had a great upbringing and his family was completely normal. That's even more fucking twisted. I think that, yeah, that would have been less good. That makes though. him more fucked. That makes him more fucked in the head because that means he takes it upon okay, himself. Okay, hold on a minute. Not, a, not a, a product of his environment. Okay, but still, just because he did have this fucked up family and stuff... He, it still could be that he was just pure evil to begin with, and that just also happened to be part well, of his life. It, it's most definitely open for interpretation, right? It doesn't actually tell you. We just assume these things, but that's fine. Yeah. It doesn't so, okay. take away from it all. If they like, would have done it the awesome. other way, yeah. if they would have done it the other way, it would just be watching Halloween again. I yeah, mean, in the original, you exactly see his parents point. are like these normal, everyday people. You know, they come home. You know, they're obviously wearing nice we clothes. They're obviously a good him. family. They could. How do you know? Maybe they molested him. We don't know that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, we I could know. obviously. If you go further into a shitty movie like Halloween Resurrection, then you sort of find out a lot <laughs> they, more about Michael they Myers' ruined, past. They ruined the scariness of it. They took. Here's my problem with the movie. You want to know what Dude, my problem is with the movie? Is scary to they me. They took. No, no, no. They, here's what they did. They took a fucking creepy, scary film and they turned it into a fucking action flick. They no, turned it into an fucking action yeah, flick. They no, I don't talk about it. I mean, it's, like, this for, it's like the same dude, level. The way he you know kills that it? kid is no, listen, so Listen, listen, listen. Let me, let me say this. You know where I put it? Do you know where I categorize the Halloween remake? You know where it goes for me? It goes right there with the fucking Underworlds. And the fucking uh, um, yeah. Resident Evils and the no, action no, does. No, 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 That's no, where it goes. No. Absolutely. I'm sorry, Clive, Just, but no. I no, mean, it would yeah. be an action movie no. if you put like Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. But I'm sorry. I mean, I agree. No. Like Dude, everything you the, say. The, like, this one, look at the original. Look at the look at the original. They had minimalistic violence. He was not a brutal, savage guy like he is in the fucking remake. They made him. They try to make him so much more brutal and look oh he's so fucked up and he had a bad childhood and he's so fucking angry blah 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 was, he was more was... scary he was a hundred times scarier when we didn't know as much when he walked slow when he was fucking creepy not this fucking same brute See? big guy that just is super vi it's okay so fucking, well let me ask you so a question then. if you ran, <laughs> if you ran into Michael Myers, who's just moving all slow and being all creepy, or you run into big ass Tyler Maine, who's coming at you with a knife. Like, how? Which one's gonna scare you more? Tyler For me, Mayer. honestly, the idea of being stalked by somebody and you're not exactly sure, you're not seeing glimpses of them. That's just it's kind of like more subtle to me is scarier than somebody right in front of you. Because if somebody's right in front of you, you there's nothing there's nothing to worry about. It. I mean, there's yeah, no just there's worry no, nothing there's no except surprise for dying. attack. It's right fucking there in front of you. But if you have somebody stalking you and watching you from afar and following you, it's just way creepier to me. It just way. It creepier. is. Creepier, I think it's creepier. But it's not scary. Tyler Mayne it's right not. in front of me with a knife. I don't know. To me, it is. In my opinion, it's scarier. So you would have find liked, it scarier. You would have rather liked the movie, you know, getting back to the whole remake thing. You know, would you have rather seen Robert Zombie just totally remake Halloween? Exactly no. how it was. No, but I, I, think liked that, to see I think that's boring. What, I think that's completely I, boring. And I love the backstory. And a lot of another thing that people always seem to bring up too is the fact that you know Michael Myers is a lot more brutal in this film, and I think that's good. Yeah, you know, especially he's an angry in the individual. One. He's pissed off, dude. In the he second one, he's a lot more too. angry. Yeah, I, I just, I think it's, I don't know. I think it just works, man. I don't, I, I, do too. I don't know if we're gonna go into the second one, but if anybody's seen the second one, you'll know that Michael Myers is way more violent and angrier than the original remake of this. Yeah, and he is like he actually grunts in that film a little bit and shit he too. Like, every growl, every time he stabs somebody, you hear him scream like a madman. When he's stabbing the so hell out of the nurse, he's yeah. screaming. When he eventually, at the end, you see. Actually I don't, hear I don't him like talk. all of that so much, but the the in the in the re the first remake, when you have when you have him kill that kid though, dude, you just like, to me it's just like holy fuck, they just killed a kid. Like he just brutally. You know how long it would take to beat somebody to death with a stick? That kid was in pain. <laughs> yeah. and then, when he's sitting in the fucking hospital for all those damn years, and, and he just wants to leave. Like, he's a pissed-off person. 
he wants to get out. He doesn't want to be there. He wants to go see his family that he forgets that he even killed in the first place. I love the Halloween vibe of it when he's sitting there and he wants to go trick or treating and the wind's blowing. He's sitting on a curb with his candy fucking corn and he's. It, it, I, I really like it. Okay, you but here's one. one thing. Here's one thing that ties into the hospital scene. Do you really think it was needed for Lou Temple and that other guy to be included in that scene where he eventually breaks away? Oh, you know the, wait, the, there's two different versions. You mean the rape scene? I, I think the yeah, rape yeah, scene is exactly. completely garbage and it shouldn't be in the film. But, I thought the um, kill scene was decent, but I really didn't think that they needed the part with Lou Temple in there. I think that that just yeah. was, you and, know, and Rob Zombie's just, imagination. Let yeah, me the just say something. Definitely didn't need to be there. I, I, think the re I think the original film is one of the best films ever made, and I think it is better than the remake by a long shot. I'm just saying, I love the remake too, yeah. and yeah, they're I, different films. I think that's the problem with people is they can't separate them enough to to enjoy both of them, which I can. I can. I can. You know. Separate. You know, another thing I really do like about the film that no one ever seems to really bring up a lot. I know Rob Zombie gets shit on a lot for his work and stuff, and but I actually really like his, you know, the, the a lot of the shots that he does in that film. Mm -hmm. You know, in the like second one, where in the Mike second Myers one it feels off. like a whole Rob Zombie film. Yeah, it, there's a lot really of Rob Zombie stuff. imagery in there. Yeah. Since we're talking a little bit about H2, would you consider Halloween 2 to be? A remake of the original Halloween 2, or no. would you just consider that to be a sequel of the remake? No, I wouldn't because consider the only the first bit of footage in the movie of you know Scout Taylor Compton in the hospital. That's the only bit familiar to the original sequel. The rest of it, with the white horse and the dreams, and you know eventually Laurie's you know this twisted weird girl that has absolutely nothing to do with the original um, sequel to it. Yeah. Also, I like in in the in the remake how you I don't even know how to really explain it, but spit it out. Pass. <laughs> Fuck man, let's just move on unless anyone else has yeah. got anything else because yeah. we're yeah. going all night about this. We still have a lot to touch yeah. on, so I guess let's go. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let's go ahead and get on um I spit on your grave. It wasn't uh, the best, but it. it was pretty okay. It wasn't the best, but it was pretty okay. I gotta say, the, the kills were definitely upped in this film, and they were pretty they brutal. Were, they were pretty violent. Especially pretty fucking violent. I think it's an understatement. Like, it's actually just nasty to watch. Like, I mean, especially the last kill. You know, The last kill was disgusting. It was, just, it was just horrible. For every male out there, that, I mean... <laughs> that must have been torture. Uh, overall, I didn't mind the film. I'm not... I'm not like eh, it's okay. It it's seems okay. more like Last House on the Left almost. Yeah, the remake of Last House on the Left. It was entertaining, but I wouldn't say by any means it was a great film. But I don't know, man. I've always had mixed feelings on this one. I don't really know what I think about it, to be honest. The characters were interesting, though. I kind of actually liked some of the characters in this. Yeah. The deaths were pretty. Pretty good, pretty violent, which I, I like. like the, I like the scene where she shows up at the cop's house and interacts with the with the cop's family. I thought that's mm -hmm. fucking brutal. That man. was cool. Yeah. Um, I really like that one death scene where he's laying on top of like this huge like Don't cooler spoil acid. all the deaths. He's lying. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil all the deaths, JP, but he's lying on top of this cooler of acid, and she removes, like, the boards of wood, and he pretty much has to, you know, like, flex his way up in order to avoid himself from being burnt. I thought that was really cool and pretty gross. Yeah. Dude, this October we're doing a fucking Halloween show. I need, I got more to say about the remake, but I'll cut it short right now. <laughs> yeah, Halloween, we're going to be going full force at that. Yeah, I'll be the only one. I'll be the only one on the fucking panel trying to trying to fight and claw my way for why I don't like the film. No, you brought up good really points, though, dude. It, huh? You brought up good points. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm the only one. We need, like, three more people that don't like the film so I can outbalance you fuckers. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Where was that when we did... Yeah, so, okay, when we do the Hellraiser series, I'm going to have... That's going to be you. You're going to be me up the, <laughs> that guy. You're going to be the Simon Cowell of the group. All right, let's keep it moving, guys. Uh, the next one here is one that I haven't seen. I've only seen parts of. Um, I own the original three. I, yeah, I think there's yeah three of them. Um, and that is It's Alive. 
Does it oh, man. Out? The remake is straight up garbage. That's all I'm going to say, man. Yeah, garbage. I didn't like it. it. I didn't like that at all. Really bad CGI. Just just a straight up bad movie. That's all I'm going to say. I've only seen it once and I, I fucking loathed it. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Next one. Uh, the Last House on the Left. I kind of like it better than the original. It's one of the rare remakes where I like it better than the original. And Wes Craven is probably my favorite director, but the original Last House on the Left film is so weird because the things that I the thing like I love the villains in it. I think they're you know perfect and nasty and gross, um, but the stupid decisions with the cops walking I didn't like the cops the in the original at all and the music and stuff is just so oh, the, the music is the one thing that really takes you out of that film it's goofy yeah. and it's off putting and stuff. it's I'm not yeah. overly a huge fan of the original film and I'm not overly a huge fan of the remake either I thought the the remake was another cop out with the girls if if you haven't seen I'm not going to I I, see, yeah. I don't know about that though man I think I don't I, like I don't like the fact that they changed that. I think it was worked better in the original film, but I like the fact that I I I would have liked if they it would have stayed the same. But on the same side, I kind of liked that it was different because you was expecting it to be the same. And mm -hmm. since they did Back it to... differently, I was kind of like, oh yeah, well I wasn't expecting that. Um, I, I gotta admit I think, though. I love the fact in this remake that, you know, if you once the killers first meet the two girls, you kind of know that they really don't want to do what they're going to do, but they say there's no other choice and they have to. Yeah. Has anybody seen that part? You know, the head guy is like, I'm sorry, but, you know, there's no other way out of this. We have to do this. Yeah, and also just the... Um... I think that the uh, the villains, except for the um, dude from Breaking Bad, I didn't care for it too much. Like David Hess in the original is is amazing. It is you know cool. Yeah, definitely and, the um, weird thing about that film. And uh, the the newer villains seem a little too polished and too Hollywood. Um, and I didn't like that about it. But the brutalness of the whole like scene where like shit's really going down and people are dying and getting like you know tortured mentally and physically. Um, that scene really works to me, especially when uh, a death happens. I thought for the original, you know, you see the... I think the names are changed, but in the first one, I believe the kid, his name is Joey, and then the remake, it's Justin. They took yeah. it w a lot differently in, this, in the remake than they did with the original. Not spoiling the original, but him at the end of it, it was pretty sad what happened to him. But in but this one, he's kind of like almost considered a hero, if anything. Yeah, I didn't like that either. I liked him being addicted to heroin and just a little slave puppet. puppet that was creepy. I mean? The original, the original, what they did to him was absolutely creepy. Yeah. You know, and, in the remake, and, it just goes too fucking far, man. It goes way too far. Danny just made a comment to me, and which I was actually going to talk about. Was the it the ending? The ending? The yeah, oh, God damn like, it. The That's fuck? the worst thing made, ever. It ruins comment, the whole like, That was people. weird. That How many microwaves do you know that work without a fucking door? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good point, though. But like, like, I, 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 I maybe it would have made sense if they the said top. the guy was like a microwave inventor, the dad or something. You know? No, he was a doctor. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's so... Uh, whatever. Yeah. It was but that, good. That's the one thing I didn't good. like about it. But everything else, you know, I, 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 th I think it's better than the original. Um, next yeah. up, I guess. Unless anybody Come has on. anything else to say. Nice. Yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and keep it moving. The next one we have here on the list is gonna be Maniac, which just I don't came even, out. I don't even year. want to talk about this. I still I, haven't I, seen it, so I don't want to know yeah. anything about I it. I recently seen the original, and oh my god, I love that movie so much. It's my favorite I, slasher film. Of I all. must I must admit, Mood suggested this to me, and this is like one of the very few horror movies my dad actually liked, mainly because the killer in this one was in The Godfather, so. That's yeah. one. That's one of the few horror movies he actually did like because um, Joe Spinell was the killer in this movie. So that I appreciate that a lot more. But never seen the remake yet. No, I still haven't gotten around to it. Wow, am I the only one that's seen it then? Out of all of us? Yeah, give us like a three-word review because I don't want to hear anything <laughs> about it. Okay, hold on. I'm I'm gonna talk about it a little bit, but I'm not gonna give nothing away. I'm so um, scared. I'm about to plug my ears. Huh. All right. First off. Um, 
Funny Elijah that. Wood does a really good fucking job. And it's kind of surprising because you're thinking Hobbit, Hobbit, Hobbit. You know, you got this Lord of the Rings. I'm thinking faculty, 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 faculty. You know, you're thinking, yeah, faculty. <laughs> you know, like, you start thinking about him in all these other roles, and you're just like, oh, no. But he really, really gets it off. And um, the music in it is just absolutely phenomenal. It really has a really strong 80s synthy kind of vibe. Um, yeah, I'll grab the kills are great in it. Um, you know, it's mainly filmed through first-person view. There is a few other shots that aren't. But I really thought that was an interesting oh, that's that's Basically that's watching the whole film through Frank Zito's eyes, which I thought was a really cool take on it. Um, I thought it brought a lot to the film. I think it really made it more uh, enjoyable and brought a whole new dimension to it. And as far as the remake goes, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the original as well. Um... I think the remake stands right there with it. I really do. Um, I know that's a big statement, but I, I'm telling you guys, when you get a chance to see it, you it's it's fucking great. The the story that you see, like his backstory, because you actually get some of Frank Zito's backstory. Don't go into it too much. Which is interesting that you like that because you hated Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, because because they didn't change him, though. You get the backstory, but they didn't make him somebody else. They didn't try to make him more brutal than he already was. He was already a fucking savage dude scalping broads in fucking New York. He was already a super grimy dude. Jason was nowhere near as... I mean, Jason. Michael was nowhere near as um, savage uh, in the... In but the, we don't even uh, really know for sure. He, he could have been. In the well, it, in the original, they going. only touched upon it so very little, and that's the only reason why you get to know that. Even he's though as obviously he as wasn't, he is. I'm just saying. Um, I like, but that's how Rob Zombie saw the character. If he was, I'm all right. I, we gotta save it. We'll save yeah. it. Yeah, we'll yeah, save yeah. it. Yeah. We'll save it because I, I can talk forever about it. So yeah. let me get back to Maniac. Maniac is awesome. Um, I'm not going to give away much about it. It's fucking great. I really enjoyed it. It's one of the best remakes I've seen in a long time. It blew me away. My expectations were not that high for it, and wow, it was it was great. It was really fucking good. And I was kind of thinking, I was like, man, I'm not going to like this shit. I was like, it's going to be a real fucking Hollywood decked out CGI heavy movie. That's another thing. I don't think there's any CGI in the whole movie. Is the I'm film set sure. in New York? Uh, I believe so, yeah. It's in a is city, it, yeah. Does it at I'm least have sure a little bit of grimy New York to it? Yeah, there's... Oh, it's... It, dude, the way it's filmed, like, the shots, a lot of the shots are fucking brilliant because it's first I person. I fucking love you grimy New York. Things. Yeah. You really do. Um, I with a regular camera, every day. you know, I'm not exactly having the first like. person view, and they did a hell of a job with it. It's just really, really well do done film. Um... Not worth not worth just a check out, but actually worth a buy. If you're a collector, I highly recommend you guys buy it. Obviously How long have we uh, been going on here? Uh, we're two hours and five minutes, and we still got about 15 more movies to go. For the yeah. remake. Do you actually want to maybe hit like another uh, big one and then go in and maybe talk about some films that we would maybe like to see remade? Or do you want to finish off the list? We might as well finish off the list, man. If we if we if we don't spend thirty fucking minutes on each one, we'll get the <laughs> for actually for uh, well, maniac. I for know the a remake. big one coming up that we're probably gonna spend like ten minutes on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Don't worry. So we we'll might as well. It. Let's do it now. Let's do it now. Wait, oh, one, do one it more now thing about maniac though. It. One more thing about maniac for the remake of this. Was it set back in like the same day as the original or was it actually in the 2000s? It's modernized, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, the areas in New York are definitely a lot different today than what they were back in the day, so that would be interesting to see. Okay. Right, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Step. I'm going to just narrow it down because I know we really are actually limited on time. So let me um let me narrow it down. I got a few that I'm going to pop off the list. And we'll get into just a few that are left um, because they are essential, and I want to make sure they are mentioned. Um, okay. So we've got about, <clears throat> I don't know, one, two, three, six, seven more left to go. Um, I cut the list in half. So let's kind of run through these pretty quick. Um, and the ones, obviously, know we were going to usually spend more time on, we'll just – Spend more time on it next time because we'll end up doing a whole show on this anyway, I'm sure. Um, so, yeah. 
Uh, let's get into that one. And that is uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is going to be the next one. Okay. I'm pretty sure everybody here likes it, correct? Yes, very yep. much. Yep. I got to say, this is one remake where, besides Leatherface, none of the characters resemble the original characters. I mean... And if you see the remake and you watch the original, you know, you'd be asking yourself, who's Luda May? Who's Uncle Monty? Yeah. Of course, who's Arlie Boy, Ermey? I got but, an interesting thing about that is, do you not feel like you could take one of those characters, say, uh, Arlie Ermey, and put him in the original family and he would fit right along? He no? probably would, but... I think he definitely would. But it works so much better in this movie for some reason. I don't know why, but, you know, he probably would do an amazing job if he did act in the original. But, I don't know, I think he really stole the movie with, uh, you know, his performance of the show. Yeah, I, I agree, but same way in, you know, part two, I think Chop Top stole the movie. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the family has always been, like, the key focus of the films, and... I think that the family in the remake is great. I like Arlie Ermey, and he feels like a family member, is what I'm trying to say. You could put him in the original film, and he would fit right in as a family member. Yeah, but like I, I said in the first episode, you know, you consider Leatherface not being the main antagonist of the whole movie. The first one, it's, you know, Drain or the Hitchhiker. Second, it's Chop Top. Third, it's, like, Tinker or Alfredo. Fourth, it's Vilmer. Then eventually Arlie Ermey and now um, Butch one. Hartfield in 3D. So Leatherface is kind of a backup in a way. Yeah. But I don't know. I think what they did with it is they polished it over too much. I wish it was like a small farmhouse instead of this big, you know, you know, like rundown mansion. But I, I wish. How cool is that house, though, dude? You can't not use that if you're, it's available. Come on, that thing is cool. Yeah, it was cool, good. but I also I like the fact of the backstory in which the town... You find out more about it in the prequel, but yeah, you know, they, I, had I like to be, they had to become cannibals because, you know, the town, the meatpacking plant, you know, closed down. There were no more jobs, and they it's had to find a way to survive. Yeah, that was great. It's so easy to get away with everything because the town's fucking abandoned. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I, I really, really, I really like the, uh, the remake a lot, personally. Uh, Laura's over here messaging me saying... Are you kidding me? You guys liked it. It sucked balls. Chop Top from Part 2 alone was better than that whole remake. Um, I'll say that. I would agree that Chop... Because Chop Top is one of my all-time favorite characters of all time. Yeah. It's so fucking awesome. But, you know, the remake was decent. I, te first I of all, Texas Chainsaw Massacre like, is my favorite horror film of all time. So, saying that I like the remake a lot... I mean, it's saying a lot, though. Yeah. But, yeah, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the film. Um, I remember when it first came out and I saw it, and and I even liked it then um, when I first checked it out. I, I, I think, the, actually, you know, when I first saw it, I kind of wanted to think, you know, oh, it's, it's not as gritty um, and it's not as grainy as the original. But you got to remember the way the original was filmed with, like, almost yeah. no fucking – there was no music, first off. And the way it was filmed was very real. They were actually miserable during filming. They were fucking baking hot. Um, yeah, it was and done kind of in a low-budget way. Hot. Baking, dude, it, the remake looks like it's fucking baking hot. Like, they're all sweating and shit. It, like, it, everything's gross. I don't know. I, I like the way that it was filmed. It has great shots, like wide-angle shots and stuff. And just, um, you know, the hitchhiker at the beginning. Like, you're kind of thinking something different because you're looking at the original, and then, she, bam, she blows her head off and stuff. Yeah. Like, that's fucking... That would suck. What would you do? You would have to wait around for the sheriff. <laughs> Unless if you still want to see Skinner with a dead girl in your car. <laughs> yeah. Just throw yeah. on your shoulders and just, like, move her arms around, so... No, I, I think the beginning's a bit better, though. I like yeah. the beginning. I What I really loved about this movie, and I think you guys will also agree, the part that made it look found footage in a way, with the sheriff reports and stuff like that, I didn't really like yeah. the way that they changed the name of the character of... Love yeah, I, why being, did they do that? They changed it from Bubba Sawyer to... Thomas Hewitt, and now in the 3D one, it's now Jedediah Sawyer. I really didn't like that. I really didn't right. like the whole Hewitt idea. Well, Bob wasn't his real name, though. But you that's, never, that's knew, a, you never knew his real name. I, yeah, so I, know go, Jedediah. I know we could go on about this all night, but we got to keep it moving, guys. we got to wrap up all these right. last six. Yeah. Um, 
let's go ahead and get into the next one, which is My Bloody Valentine. This was one that really just wanted to make it be known for being in 3D. One of the few horror films in the 2000s yeah, to that's be actually 3D, in 3D. Yeah, that's when 3D first came back again. Yeah. Yeah, the whole The whole trailer was just, you know, the killer throwing his axe at the camera. That's the one thing that got people to watch this movie. I remember liking it. I don't remember a whole lot about it, though. So that's about it that I have to say. I haven't seen it. I saw the original, which I absolutely loved, but I've never seen the remake. I've We're seen definitely going to have to do a Texas Chainsaw Massacre show, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure all the major franchises we will. will get there eventually. Um, but, yeah, My Bloody Valentine, the remake was definitely not as good as the original, but it wasn't bad either. I didn't think it was completely terrible. Um, but it it was it wasn't um it wasn't like as bad as the fog, but it wasn't as good to me as like something like Friday the Thirteenth, which I know you guys aren't huge on, but we'll say um, the best one in our minds was the Hills Have Eyes. So I like the Friday the Thirteenth remake. I like it. I I like, like, it. <laughs> I, I like Nine Nine Elm Street a lot better than Friday the Thirteenth for some reason. That is that it just blows my mind. <laughs> Yeah, I like so crazy. way better than Nightmare on Elm Street remake. But, um, but okay, yeah, so, uh, so that, that covers my bloody Valentine. I, mean, I, I, I like I said, it's not great, but uh, it's, we might it's as a, well get to the fucking the thing. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about that. That's on the list. Um, John Carpenter's The Thing, which obviously is the first remake, um, and then it was remade again, or a prequel, or a sequel, whatever the fuck. It was the a same prequel. Title, the it thing. was a prequel. Yeah, prequel. Um, but obviously it's still called The Thing. Um, but we're yeah. talking about the one that John Carpenter did, which is an absolute classic. Um, it's my favorite Carpenter film. film. It's number five in my top ten, and it's my favorite remake of all time. It's amazing. The claustrophobic, uh, you know, isolation, the cold winter. Like you can feel the cold in that film. The effects are you know, some of the best ever. Much uh, like the blob, the, the effects. Story, the story is just fantastic. And uh, the characters. I, dude, I was just saying it's the moods the other night. I'll watch that film now after watching it so many times and still forget who's the thing when. And that that just is awesome for rewatch. What are we talking about? The thing. The thing. Oh, the thing. Oh, it's just, it's beyond brilliance. It's, I mean, arguably one of the best remakes ever, you know. I actually had someone comment on my video when I did my top ten remakes of all time, and they he wrote a three-paragraph par, three, um, uh, basically complaint to me saying that I, you know, that the thing isn't a remake. <laughs> I was like, well, I pretty much think it is. Um, I'm I mean, pretty it, sure John Carpenter thinks it is. Yeah, so I, I just didn't really know how to answer. I'm like, I mean, Carpenter even said it's a remake, so I don't understand where that's coming from. But anyways, the film, it's just brilliant on all levels. Great storytelling, awesome effects, awesome acting, great atmosphere. I mean, what could you want more from a film? The thing is a perfect the idea of what a fucking of a remake should be. So good. John Carpenter has always been a fan of The Thing. Even in Halloween, you could see his tribute to The Thing. And even in this movie, he pays tribute to the original classic. So from the beginning, he's always been like a diehard Thing fan. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the casting, man. Kurt Russell, amazing. So good. All right, let's go ahead and keep it moving, guys. The next one we have here is a 2006 film, I think. 2005, 2006. Um, and that is The Omen. I'm, I'm I just remember well. so many people were talking about this movie, mainly because of the fact that they thought the movie was coming out the same day the world was going to end on 6606. Yeah, That's really the... I've never seen the remake, but I just remember everybody going off on the fact that, you know, this is going to be the last movie ever to be seen on 6606. <laughs> I do remember that. I, I, I've not seen any of the films, so... I'm not a big fan of the remake, to be honest. I... It's just, it was kind of pointless. It was very much like just a boring remake. They didn't really change a whole lot. It's kind of like, I call it like another psycho, you know. Psycho. Holy shit. I forget that even exists sometimes. I know. Yeah. You know, I, I just mentioned it earlier, but. It's just a bad remake, man. It's just, oh, it's, it's a pointless it's, a, it's almost a pointless film to even talk about, really. Yeah, it's a it's shot for shot, word it. for word remake, pretty it's much. It's just not, it's not exciting. The sh- if the shots are the same, the dialogue's exactly the same. Well, what, if you want what something killed like that, that? What killed that is Vince Vaughn. Absolutely. That I is Vince Vaughn a psycho. You know who the cast? 
talent modes. Who should they cast? Bill Mosley. Oh, as Crispin, uh, Crispin Glover should be cast. If they ever do like a Psycho remake, Crispin Glover would play a great Norman Bates. Me and Jake think... were, we were, we were talking about this one night, and he threw that name out, and I instantly was like, bam, best idea ever. I think Bill <laughs> Mosley would tackle Norman Bates pretty well. Dude, Bill Mosley couldn't tackle the cook. <laughs> <laughs> But still, you see how messed up in the head Bill Mosley is. I love no. Bill Mosley, yeah, man. But here's but he the thing, though. So okay, he could do cook. that, but look at the fucking characters he did in Devil's Rejects. I know, you mean awesome, to tell right? me, But those were original fucking characters. Amazing, characters. deep They're characters. Original characters, though. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm sure going to be going on a lot, but he did a movie called The Tortured. I reviewed it on the Fry Tube, in which he kidnaps this little You're kid. You're on the Fry Tube? Dude, I'm going to kick your ass <laughs> in a second. Yo, you're killing me with that tonight. You're killing it, son. There's a part in the movie where, you know, he's pretending to be a mother, a father, and a daughter at the same time. And I think that would make him a kick-ass choice as Norman Bates easily. Maybe. Okay. We've talked enough about the shitty Psycho remake. Um, <laughs> we got we got two more to bang out. Um, let's get into Piranha. I like pretty the much original and I like the remake. Piranha, the remake, is pretty much Girls Gone Dead meets Jaws in my own mind. Yeah, it's a fun movie, man. I don't think I, you could put Jaws and Piranha in the same sentence. I don't know. Well, well, you take water animals and I get what you're saying, wild man. and you I'm get joking, that. Man. I liked it, though. I thought <laughs> I, there, there really wasn't anything wrong with it. I, I like the, yeah, the Jaws, you know, bring that up because, you know, the opening scene with Richard Dreyfus in the water. I think that's pretty fucking cool, man. It's a, it's a great yeah, little bit that they did there. I thought that was enjoyable, but the movie is over the top, but it's still funny. Yeah, you know, it's, like, it's a B movie. It's it's supposed, it's supposed to be cheesy. To be bad, it's supposed yeah. to look yeah. bad. That's it's just one. a fun time. I mean, watching that movie in 3D in the theater and, you know, the part with the cock, I mean, I was like, that's just so excessive. With it. it was coming at the screen. I was like, is that yeah. thing going to slap in the face? I don't know what the fuck is going on. I still on. haven't it's seen Piranha 3 Double D. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Oh, Three man. Double D is pretty bad, but it's still fun. It is such a or bad even movie, the, but it's super Is it like the same so premise bad. as the, the remake? or? Uh, no, like, it's uh, Piranhas in a Pool. Oh, pr- <laughs> There's no, like, Girls Gone Wild or anything. Dude, in that. freaking Christopher There, Lee, there is. Man. It's not as... You know, honestly, it's not as gory and st- as bloody and, as the first one. I was expecting it to be a lot more, but it's... It's not, man. There's some really good comic relief from David Hasselhoff in it. He's actually pretty fucking funny. I, I thought the it. ending to the original remake was pretty funny and pretty good to hold you off for another sequel. Yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, so Piranha, I think we all like it for its cheesiness, B-movie qualities. It's fun. Yeah, it's really I like Piranha a lot, actually. I thought the effects were, were not terrible, and um, I just enjoyed the film overall. I thought it was a fun one. Um, that brings us to the next one. Uh, that is our last one, uh, which is already a film that, honestly, I don't fucking like to begin with. And I don't like this remake, either. So this is just a shit film with a shit remake. Prom Night. Mm. I would agree. I've never seen the remake, but I think the original Prom Night's pretty garbage. So I can't imagine the PG-13 remake being much better. Yeah, this came a- out at a time where everybody of my friends were just turning 13 and everyone was so pumped up to be actually allowed to go into PG-13 rated movies. And this was one of the first ones that they actually like wanted to see. You know, they would turn 13, they'd be like, oh, Prom Night's out, kick ass, let's go see it. Even then, once watching it, I never saw the original, but there was something about it that I really <laughs> didn't like to begin with. Yeah, it's... I find the I find the original film to be so overrated. Like there is people that do like it, but it's not a good movie, you know. And the remake is just oh, once man. again, it's because yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. That's the only reason anybody cares about Prom Night. Yeah, it does. It you gets really good praise because of that. And she's not even. I don't think she's that good herself. So Jamie Lee Curtis is the most overrated actress of all time. I said it. I actually, really? uh, I agree with that too. I don't agree with that at all. Neither do I. I really don't. Agree. Shame really? on you. Shame you think on you. Okay, we're split on this one, but I don't think she's any good in prom. I don't think she's even good in Terror Train. I mean, okay. Halloween. We talked about this before. I'm like, okay, I can buy it, but it's you know, it's not my favorite thing in the world. But I mean, 
I don't I know, mean, man. I think... In Halloween, she I does mean, my, just as good as anybody else would have did. Mm-hmm. The question that I pose is, what could she have done in Halloween to be better than what everybody, you know, thinks of as when they think of Jamie Lee Curtis? Like, what could what would could she have done to make the film better? Like, what, what was the role missing? The thing, no, the thing is, it's <laughs> not. What, the thing is, everybody <laughs> says she is so <laughs> much more awesome. than what she actually does. She just does what any other character from Friday the Thirteenth or Nightmare on Elm Street. She's exactly the same as any of them, but for some reason, she gets like a bigger, more attention than like Heather Langenkamp. I think you could have took, you know, the chick from Friday the Thirteenth Part Two, put her in Halloween, and it would have been the same exact thing. Yeah. See, I actually like man. I'm gonna get crucified for this. I I like Jamie Lee Curtis more than Langenkamp. I feel like Langenkamp. No, you won't of, get crucified for it. We're the ones I, that's gonna I, get crucified. I kind of feel like um, I kind of feel like you know she. She didn't do bad, you know. Heather Langenkamp no, didn't she's... do bad at all oh, in her role, okay. but she. She didn't like it. It just seemed like I don't know, man. It's hard to explain. It just seemed almost like. Like not really forced, but like she was trying to fit that mold of the script. Like it didn't, it didn't feel natural. Like, like Jamie Lee Curtis. Like when you're watching Halloween, it feels more like you're watching the story rather than watching people act out a story. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. Heather Langenkamp, I feel like I'm watching an actress, a good actress, but an actress nonetheless. When I watch Jamie Lee Curtis in the Halloween, I feel like I'm watching the story of this girl unfold. You know what I mean? Like I don't feel like she's being filmed. I feel like we're just watching this shit happen. You know what I mean? Where I, I feel that, Langen I think Camp that's is more kind of like due to the it. direction of the film than actually Jamie Lee Curtis. I don't see what she does that is so impressive. Like me and Moose have talked about it a bunch of times. Like any other girl actress from any of the other slashers, you interchange them, and I think it would be the same film. But couldn't you say that for any scream queen, really? I mean, for, for yeah, anybody, pretty much. Oh, for anybody, really. <laughs> um, if it's but somebody it's, that has a good reputation, and you say, "Well, we can re- replace him," it's like saying, "Oh yeah, Angus Scrim is great as a tall man, but we could find somebody else to replace no, him." No, we couldn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, we couldn't. Sure, you can. Exactly. But he's playing a unique character. He's playing a tall, creepy dude. Jamie Lee Curtis is playing a teenage victim like 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 any of the other slasher girls that's what i'm saying she is just another one of the slasher girls but she's the only one that gets this crazy amount of hype like she's the greatest you know scream queen ever and i just i don't know why none of the other girls got that she's probably because she's the most famous like name one other scream queen from that era that did a shitload of horror movies that's super famous still I would say, you know, sort of afterwards. Still puts I, out could big probably, movies. I could probably say Lene Quigley. She's famous more to us, like, you know, the people that know yeah. her films. I wouldn't yeah, like, say, like, you know, if you if you put up, if you put, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis against Lene Quigley, I, I think there's a lot of people out there who'd be like, who? You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, sure. definitely would. On today's but, well, stage, at the same time, really like, she's, fucking, she's like a bona fide star to us because we know her from all these great, you know, films that aren't as popular as Jamie Lee Curtis's films. So it's a little different, right? It's it's kind of hard to distinguish. Yeah. So, but for yeah. today, I could probably distinguish uh, Danielle Harris probably being the scream. Yeah, Danielle scream Harris is genre. amazing. Yeah, yeah, so Danielle Harris is actually a good actress too. Like, yeah. I, 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 I'm that's, not that's saying Jamie example. Lee isn't. I'm just saying what makes her so amazing to where yeah. everybody is so obsessed with Jamie Lee and saying she's the the best scream queen ever. I just don't get that. You know, yeah. JP, I actually agree with you 100% on that one. For once, I actually really agree with you on that. I'm not saying that she's a bad actress or she performs no. bad. She did fantastic. Just, I don't see what, you know, yeah, she I, did. I, I, I no, like, exactly, I, yeah. I just don't get the hype, you know? Yeah. So. And I think she did way better in H2O than she did in the original Halloween anyway. Yeah. Well... I guess that pretty much wraps it up for us, guys. That yeah, I don't much know how we, <laughs> that was had nothing to do with remakes. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we went through um pretty much all the movies on the list. We went through a ton of remakes, Does discussed it, them in detail, won over some, skipped some because they just sucked or we didn't know much about them because none of us even took the time to watch them because they were that <laughs> shitty. <laughs> if four cinephiles don't watch it, it sucks balls. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm putting that out there. Um, that pretty Does much that wraps up. Uh, the episode um 
You, you wanted to add something? I, I said, does anybody have a film that they would like to see remade? The Burning. The Burning? Yeah. Moods? Uh, fuck, it's such a hard question, man. I don't know. What did What did you say? What was yours? My, my two, I thought of Clown House because I think there's some potential there and we're never really going to be able to see it like like it was meant to be seen. I have the DVD. I still haven't seen it, but yeah. I heard that movie has a real fucked up background to it. Yeah, you know, it, it for sure does. And the only other one I was thinking of, which I'll probably get shot for this too, um, <laughs> is actually Hellraiser. And the reason I say remake Hellraiser is because you can make it better. You can make it better. The only problem is getting somebody that is as good as Doug Bradley what are you going to do with this series? You're not going to ever be able to create sequels that are going to be... Like, how do you get it out of this directed dvd zone? You have to do a big-budget remake. And I think out of all the franchises, Friday 13th, Elm Street, everything, Hellraiser was always the one that needed the remake the most. I think Rob Zombie could tackle that pretty good. That would be interesting. Yeah, because look at the topic. You have, like, demons from hell. I mean... Look at but Rob dude, Zombie. Rob he's Zombie will straight up old. get shot if he says he's going to remake another classic franchise. <laughs> you know which one I want to see, guys? None What's of them. That? You ready? I would love to see a Phantasm remake. No. Not a sequel, no. a remake. I want to see Part 5. I want to see Part right. 5. I thought you were going to say Return of Living Dead. I would have left right now. <laughs> um... You know, I did answer this question in a, in a contest entry the other day, and it's not really a well-known film, but I really like the idea behind Blood Beach, and that movie just kind of fails. It's just kind of a stinker. But I would love to see that movie remade because it's got a really cool idea, man. And uh, I think today they could do a good job. So yeah. I guess I'll go with Blood Beach. I even said Dawn of the Mummy, too. That was another one. So Yeah, so... Cool. We got a lot of remakes coming out right now, so you know, within six months, we could do, probably do a whole new show with fifty no more remakes on the, <laughs> on it, <laughs> because how fast Hollywood pumps them out. Uh, Leprechaun <laughs> Origins is on its way, which is called Carrie. Leprechaun Origins. Carrie, of course. Um, and there's a lot that we remake. didn't talk about. Yeah, there is. Um, I, I know. I, mean, I know. I left for about ten minutes, but did we? Did you guys bring up the grudge or any stuff like that? No, no grudge. No, I didn't really we can save all the no we can save quarantine. all the American Japanese horror films for another show. Yeah. Definitely. But, I mean, there's definitely enough that we could definitely make a part two out of this. I think we will do a part two because yeah. it's a pretty entertaining conversation. Because I, you know, I mean, it's it's one that people like to argue about remakes, yeah. Halloween. <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't wait till we do the Halloween because wow, I still want to talk about it. Zombie. I exactly. love Rob Zombie films. Don't get me wrong. I loved his first his uh, first two outings. I really, really enjoyed House of a Thousand and Devil's Rejects. But he's two for two with me. I love the those two. His original ones did not like either one of the Halloween movies. I guess I'm gonna have to watch Lords of Salem. So, to so see when you he's... say you don't like them, the I have heard a lot of good things about Lords of Salem. Really I creepy. heard the witches in that movie are actually pretty creepy. Yeah, I've heard some people say they didn't like it, but I think it's coming from a lot of people that don't necessarily give Rob Zombie a fair chance. Yeah. I'm stoked to see it, man. I Because there's a couple of buddies on here on YouTube that have mentioned it to me, and they're like, you've got to see it, Mooch. You, you'll really like it. So I'm pretty yeah. stoked about that. It's very encouraging coming from them. So I just don't totally get the really people who really say it. that the Halloween remake is like the worst thing ever made. Like, come on, dude. You can't even appreciate like the cinematography or anything in it. What in my hell? opinion, you know what the best remake is next to The Hills Have Eyes? The thing? No. Yes. The 1931, <laughs> 1931 Dracula is technically a remake, but it is so well done. I love that movie to death. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good movie. Yeah. It's a good movie. I mean, in my honest opinion, I think the best remake ever is probably The Thing. Good shit. But my personal favorite, now don't get that all twisted, is it's The Blob. The thing. I, I personally love to watch The Blob. <laughs> yeah, The Blob is like right up there. The Blob, The Fly, just, and The Thing. It's so fun. I just, I love the movie. And I watched The Thing, you know, the other night or last night. And it's just, it's brilliant, man. It's it's brilliant. And I honestly do think it is. It might even be the best. But that's just my opinion. So, yeah. all right, What do you think, Clive? Uh, Clive, favorite remake. Hurry up. Throw it out. My favorite remake, uh, like I said, I'd love to see... Uh, oh, oh, my favorite one? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, shit. 
Oh man, now you ask me something. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. I know one, but I don't know if I want to stick with that because it's one of my favorite remakes. But I don't know if that's the one I want to go with. <laughs> okay, I'll I'll just say it because I know it's one of my favorite remakes, and everybody knows this that knows me. Uh, Tom Savini's Night of the Living Dead. Um, it's a great remake. Yeah, yeah I really, really enjoy it. I grew yeah, up on it, and I think that's why it, it holds a real special spot for me because I watched that movie like from the year it came out, you know, from 1990 onward. You know, I seen that movie when I was like a fucking little Todd, you know. So it's funny to look back at something that you grow up on, like any of those films. Like A Nightmare on Elm Street Four holds a special spot for me because I've seen it so many times, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight is the same way. I seen that one, even though people really hate it. I, I watched that one so many times growing up. Like certain films, you know, yeah, they have a certain, totally special spot that. when you see them so much. Yeah. And when I feel the same way about Jason so Goes to Hell. But that's yeah. how I am with Fright Night. I, that's Fright Night for me, you know? Yeah. I've seen that movie so many fucking times. Fright Night and House. Those yeah, are two movies that just hold a special place. I fucking love House, dude. You know, those are – I could watch them all the time, so. Yep. I think that's about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. We've gone I on think, a long time. Um, yeah, we've been on for two Is this and a half our longest show? Hour, so. <laughs> huh? Is this our longest one? You know, yeah, we, uh, we I don't, probably I don't think this so. I think we had one that was almost three hours. We had one that was a little longer. That was like probably our first, first episode. Actually, I think, yeah. Right, I think it was the, thank the you for watching. Show. Yeah, we do appreciate it. Um, sorry we had problems with the comments tonight, guys. That was not our fault. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, that just is... Just blame it on Moods. Just blame it on Moods and YouTube together because Moods actually owns Google and YouTube. He's a billionaire. He doesn't like to talk about it. He makes Tony Stark look like a broke bitch. But that's the yep. reality of things. Um, <laughs> look what you did, you little jerk. <laughs> look what you did, you little jerk. You ruined it. You spilled the goddamn Pepsi on the goddamn pizza. <laughs> uh, never get old. Little Macaulay. Yeah. But, um, oh, and by the way, Shock Extreme is part of the Fright Tube. I was just joking because Saturday doesn't get a lot of views. He is our Thanks, adopted jerk. family member of the Fright Tube. <laughs> Even though I came in after, he was adopted long before. It was a coach <laughs> segment. Um, <laughs> yeah, even no, we, everybody. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. Um, I uh, I will be back next week as well with at the panel for week five, which will be I don't know. We're gonna hit you with something. You're not gonna know. You're gonna have to tune in to watch. You want to know what we're doing next week? Tune in and watch. That's the best way to stay up to date. Same time, same place, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Monday. Just come into the YouTube channel. You can watch it live streaming. You can comment. Get interactive with us. We do read the comments. We do try to get people involved in the show. And um, if we you're cool enough, well. we'll give you a We're shout watching. Out. We're watching you. If you say uh, a cool comment, we'll most likely give you a shout out. So that's one thing to look out for. Get official yeah. thumbs up. And today. we're thinking about having a poll. To see who gets to date our lovely friend Steve Ferrandino. What? <laughs> Wait, repeat what you just That's said. Right. I didn't hear a word Love you said. connection with Steve Ferrandino. Dude, That's that is, right. I'm, we're going to get old Chuck. We're going to get old Chuck Woolery out this bitch. And, and I, I'm pretty I'm sure I see a few that. contestants already. Yeah, it's <laughs> Joe with that right mind. now. JP, I'm going to come over there and kill you. <laughs> All right, I, I think we better wrap it up, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gone on too long. Um, make sure you tune in next week, Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, same place, same time, where I'll be back. Your host, Clive Craven, where you can catch me at youtube.com backslash IQ the number one goon. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to JP. As always, check me out on YouTube slash Double Shot J, where I do horror news videos that are very awesome. And then you can check out me. On Twitter, as always, which is Twitter slash Double Shot JP. Check me out on HorrorBid.com, TheDevilsEyes.com, and the Fright Tube YouTube channel, which is just type in the search for the Fright Tube because I don't know it offhand. Go ahead, Steve. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Sorry the comments got all messed up, but we're gonna try to go through those as much as can. You know, we'll try to come out on every one. But as always, you could check me out on YouTube, Shock Extreme One. You could also go on to Facebook, Shock Extreme Productions, or Steven Ferrandino. And let me say for the record, JP is a face-to-face cyber troll at the most. <laughs> so that's all I'm gonna say. Moods, I, I don't, I've only uh, heard guys. about half of what he just said. You're a troll. That's what you are. A, you're a troll.
All right, guys, it's Mood616 here. You can catch me on my channel at Mood616, that is YouTube. Uh, you can catch me on Sundays on the Fright Tube. And, uh, yeah, and also here on Clive Craven's channel as part of the Burial Grounds. So um, just want to thank everybody for tuning in. The and leaving most comments. generic and podcast name ever, <laughs> the Burial <laughs> Grounds. Ah, it's good, man. I like it. <laughs> Um, just joking. Oh, but yeah, anyways, I just want you? to give a big shout out to everybody that's been watching and supporting this. That's totally awesome, and we do read the comments. And hopefully next week it'll be back up and running, so we can actually interact with you guys live. That's pretty cool. So we don't know what the theme's going to be, or if there is going to be one, but we'll see you guys next week. Peace. And that pretty much wraps Later. it up. You've been watching the Burial Grounds episode four. We will see you guys next week. Until then, I'll see you later at the Please. burial grounds.